Well, a very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Flight Active live stream today. It's the 6th of April, 2024, 33 minutes past three in the afternoon here in the United Kingdom. Back in Microsoft Flight Simulator once again in the BAE 146. Uh, Dash 300 version today, uh, version 2, we streamed it uh, just pre-release uh, three days ago and it was released uh, yesterday morning, so I hope some of you have been enjoying flying the aircraft. I wanted to stream it again before I perhaps tuck it away in my hangar and forget everything uh, I've learned in the last sort of four or five days about the aircraft. I still have no clue what I'm doing, uh, but um, we're going to do two sexes today. Um, uh, yeah, the weather in the UK at the moment is horrible. There's another named storm right here in the Alps. It's absolutely stunning. Calm winds, clear skies forecast for all the sectors, which is really nice because I've got two challenging destinations. We're currently in uh, Austria. We'll be flying from Graz here to get this pronunciation right, so to Alton Rhine, which is about a flight time of 50 minutes nestled in the Alps. We're going to probably do a circle to land off that approach, and then we're going to continue westbound to Chambry in France again. Another uh, steep approach. Both these approaches, in fact, are off an ILS at 4 degrees, which is a little bit steeper than what we can do in the NG, so we'll be utilising that speed brake to manage the energy as well. I've got nice scenery here in Graz from Orbex. I've got some nice scenery in Alton Rhine, which is part of the Sim World Update 6 scenery. Uh, I don't have any scenery for Chambry, so yeah, <laughs> it will be a nice approach at least until we land at the airport as well. Um, brilliant. So yeah, mid-afternoon stream probably will take about three and a half hours, but really looking forward to, to streaming again the weekend. I've got some leave at the moment, which is really nice to spend some time with you. Been busy pottering around in the garden the last few days as well. Uh, the weather's getting a bit nice, as I said. It's really windy, but uh, very mild here in the UK. Uh, anyway, who we got here in chat? We have the Vince. He uh, goes uh, service from uh, Austria, Captain. Hope you're doing very well. Nice to see you here. Jonathan Wiltshire says afternoon, Captain. Hope you're doing well too. Uh, Astrew Steve M24 for the number of engines, perhaps. Yeah, we've got to look at the climb gradient out of here, actually, because uh, there's a lot of terrain on our route. It's going to go right over the Alps. I'll show you our, our geographical routing later. Um, wonder why it's called the 146. Is it so obvious I cannot see it? Um, I have no idea, Steve. Uh, four engines, one APU, and uh, six lives need to fly it, no idea at all. Uh, Zach, British Airways 350 and Virgin 78. Oh, yeah, I saw that just before the stream. They had a little bit of a ground collision. I think it wasn't the Virgin pushing back and it's just clipped the BA one as well. I think uh, someone shared in Discord a, a sensationalist tabloid uh, post where it said it's like a massive crash or something. It was just basically a wing clip uh, hitting another aircraft. Whoopsie daisy, but uh, yes, these things do happen. Uh, level changes here. Edo, nice to see you here too. Um, Paul Shuey, I hope you're doing well and, and feeling better because I know you've uh, been a bit under the weather last few months. I hope you're uh, doing well and, and glad to see you here as well. Uh, James, yeah, I see. I saw your slots and you've, your flight's been cancelled as well due to the weather in the UK. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but it means you could join in here perhaps <laughs> live, which is great. Uh, excellent. Uh, free scratch. Yeah, very expensive area. Darius is here as well. And the M71. I hope you're doing well. Uh, anyway, there we are. We're back in the 146300 uh, Alpaca Aries livery. Now, unfortunately, I don't know what's happened, but my new Sky app isn't working. Um, I'll try and get it working for the second sector, but I can't lock this flight for our official airline on New Sky. It comes up with some errors when it loads it, and uh, it's all up to date. I don't know what's going on. So, so yeah, we'll just have to sort of uh, fly off, well, online on Vatsim, but not using the, the New Sky app to lock some hours uh, for the airline officially, which is a shame. But uh, anyway, we can still continue the flight uh, normally as usual. Uh, cool. So, anyway, um, yeah, this is the beautiful Orbex scenery from Graz. I think we flew into here. I was looking at the uh, destination map in um I think it was a Comanche or something, or a twin-engined aircraft a long, long time ago when this scenery was released. But uh, yeah, Orbex do some nice sceneries as well. It's a very small airport, quite a long runway though. I think Austrian Airlines do schedule flights here in the 320 or something like that, but it's got a long runway. But the two airports we're flying into are not uh, ideal for commercial traffic. Uh, you can get a 146 in, but I wouldn't want to try getting a 737 there. Anyway, let's jump into the uh, cockpit. There we are, completely cold and dark. I've not done anything except the, set the heading and courses to the runway heading. There's no VATS of events today, so I don't anticipate any ATC. But if you do wish to join in on either sector, feel free to do so as well. Um... And yeah, it looks like a problem at the New Sky end. I'm getting the same errors uh, Astrodew as well. So I had some errors on New Sky, but it still logged my flight. Yeah, it won't even let me uh, log on, or it just comes up with errors every time I start it. So I don't know what's going on there. Uh, cool. Let me just uh, turn the music down here, and uh, we'll get some things fired up in the background. So we'll go to home, to aircraft. We'll get the oh yeah, we'll import the sim brief OFP. So we'll preload the fuel. Uh, ground power connected. Uh, I'll get G GSX fired up as well, and that's synced with my Simpri flight plan. So we'll request boarding. boarding requested. Uh, let's use let's use Austrian Airlines. There we are. That's going to open the doors as well. Excellent. And it's loaded up all the vehicles, and there is Austrian who are 
we're, we're paying them to load our aircraft today with Outback Railways. Perfect. So that's all done. I've got this fantastic uh, PDF checklist in the background from PHBKO. It's been updated, in fact, with V2, which is what I use when I pre-flight the aircraft. So, um, flight deck safety inspection. We'll check the weather radar is off. The tilt we set to 15 degrees. We can preset that now. Uh, transponder is set to standby. It's just before you turn the power on, you do all these steps. So transponder is turned all the way down to standby. Air brake is in the in position. I have that now working. So last stream I, I didn't have it configured correctly, but that's now all uh, hunky-dory, so we can use that during the approach and flip. Uh, yes, we'll both uh, board the crew. Uh, cabin crew and pilots. Um, what else do we need to do? Landing gear levers down as well. Yeah, I've got GSX profile, found them on the flightsim.ao website, so I think that's the crew brush coming over. Jim and I are on board. Oh, thank you very much, Austrian, for bringing us over. Oh, Jim and I are now feeling sick. <laughs> there we go. Right, let's get some power onto the aircraft. So battery one and two is on. External power is connected, so the battery uh, won't discharge. Just turn the music right down here in the background. Um, navigation lights, high intensity, I think that switch was up here. I've not done any test sectors, I'm afraid, either. I've checked to see the scenery is installed correctly, which it is, but no test sectors. Could be fun. Um, high intensity, no smoking sign to auto. Uh, cabin emergency lighting, we can arm, which is down here, I believe. No, that's the flight deck emergency lighting, we can arm that anyway. Cabin crew emergency lighting's there, we'll arm that too. Brake selector's yellow. Uh, your damper switches are on, autopilot master, avionics master switches are all on, anti-skid system is on, uh, yellow and green lift spoilers on, uh, that switch is not modelled, or doesn't, uh, maybe it isn't modelled on the real aircraft, I don't know, auto spoilers in op apparently. Um, bus tie AC and DC is in the auto position, is that down here? Yes it is, bus tie auto, DC. An AC galley can come on, so the cabin crew can make me a coffee. Um, bus tie, static, static inverter and generators, we can arm. arm. Uh, generator 1 and 4 switches to off, so 1 and 4 power the IDGs 2 and 3 for the hydraulics. Uh, they're in the off reset position for now, which is down here. APU master switch, we'll get it started now. So APU start, and then we'll get the APU air on. It's it's a really nice day here, really nice spring day. I'll just double check the temperature actually in Graz. Is it Graz? Graz? I don't know how it's pronounced. It's uh, tw oh wow, it's 26 degrees here. Flipping heck, 26. Is that that seems unseasonably warm for Austria. 21 in uh, Altenrhein and 22 in Chambry. Wow, it's actually really warm. Uh, anyway, Jim and I are on board. Looks like the cabin crew have arrived. Um, can't believe how warm that is. So I'm just waiting until the APU finishes booting up. Now our APU power is available. We won't use it just now, but I'll put the APU on and one pack on to provide conditioned air to the cabin. Uh, good. Initial pre-flights and cockpit lights as required. Uh, yeah, we should be daytime for the whole sector here. I forgot to mention last stream, you can have an interactive checklist and uh, upload PNG images to this if you want, or use the custom one. I, I personally like to get rid of it. And there's an interactive checklist up there. I think it's uh, the quick spots uh, there to bring that down. Uh, and I like to hide that uh, pre-flight. So, master warning system, we can just pull. Um, there's going to be multiple lights at the moment because the engine's not running. Uh, ground test we perform. The DC pump on the overhead panel, uh, we turn on just to test it at this stage. AC pump on. Check for rise in the hydraulic system. Yellow hydraulic system with the PTU, I think. Yeah, there we are. PTU's rising. And that's going to transfer hydraulic pressure to the other side. So I think it's just a test to make sure it's working. Once that's done, we can turn off the AC pump and the uh, PTU at this stage as well. Uh, perfect. Where are the passengers coming from? Oh, they're busting. Ah, oh, excellent. We don't have many bus. Uh, bus passengers. It's really cool that they have a full GSX profile now and I use it all the time. Um, yep, Berlin is very warm for the season 2. 24 degrees right now. That's balmy. Really hot today. 27 degrees near Oshen. I don't know where that is, Thomas 13, but that seems really hot. Uh, Brown is captain. Uh, will Jack be making appearances downstairs with my fiance? Maybe at some point. He's had a long walk. I walked him about an hour ago for the stream, so I'm tired and he's tired. Uh, Romulus looks like the new Sky Era might be related to checking for a new version of the app. Yeah, it looks weird, doesn't it? So, Era seems to be related to the service side SSL certificate like I think we can do on our end. Okay, hopefully they'll update it and fix it at some point. Not an issue, not an issue. Um, 
Firma Smith says, I'm going to Berlin next week for holiday. I checked the weather and it seems unseasonably warm. Mid to high 20s. Yeah, that's quite warm for April, isn't it? Barmy. Uh, excellent. Why can't we have some of this nice warm weather? We just get low pressure systems off the Atlantic every single day. Uh, perfect. I'm going to push B to reset my altimeter. Uh, engine anti-ice system, I still don't understand, but we do turn on at this stage. Uh, flight deck emergency lighting, I've already armed. Your damper 1 and 2 on the centre console, we turn on. Uh, doors are open, parking brakes set, thrust levers fuel off, hydraulics are off as well. Centre tank transfer is in the auto position. Uh, there we are, auto. I've got to remember to reconfigure this for the second sector. I'm going to probably leave it, not turn off any switches. Um, oops, I think I meant to have the left inner pump on for the APU, so I'll just turn that on now as well. Uh, press, pressure altitude, set that to the cruise altitude, so we're cruising at 280 today for the first sector. 280 set there. Uh, fasten seatbelt signs on because the fueling is already complete. We'll take a little bit of extra fuel today as well. Flight data recorders tested, and next is the FMS basically to, to load up flight management computer. So I'm just going to turn on the nav aids, DME this side as well, and we'll load up the UNS Austria 26 degrees. I guess skiing season's over. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be rapidly rapidly melting that snow in that temperature. Right, let's turn on the UNS uh, FMC. Almighty snark, the anti ice has to be off to have enough power on takeoff. Okay, yeah, on the pre flight, on the checklist, it says we, it says turn it on uh, uh, at this stage and then turn it off before departure. Oh no! Oh, I forgot to update the FMC again! Oh, it's because I updated to another version. It's really annoying. Every time you update the aircraft, it in this aircraft, it, it, exp you, it resets the default FMC database. So again, I've got an FMC that's over a year old. And I think the only way of doing it is quitting out the sim. Fingers crossed, like with the day, two, three or four days ago, um, it, 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 uh, nothing's really changed on the routing and FMS. Oh, damn it, never mind. Right, uh, let's show you this beautiful routing today. So our first sector is going to take us from, from Graz to, um, to Altenrhein, which is just east of Zurich. And this is a beautiful scenic air, but very short runway. Uh, ILS is available on 1-0. The only way to get onto 2-8 is circles land, which I think the the, um, the wind's favouring. So we'll, we'll have a look later. Oh no, it's actually switched around. It's now 0-4-0-4, so we are going to do a straight in off that ILS. It's so a beautiful routing over the Alps. We've just got to ensure we're climbing sufficiently um, as we climb up here in this aircraft that doesn't climb well. And then the second sector, I'll show you later, but we're going to carry on westbound to Chambry. Uh, which is just here, Lima Foxtrot, Lima Bravo. Uh, and the same, I went there on a school trip once, which is pretty cool. Uh, excellent, so what we'll do, we'll bring that up, uh, set the FMC here, so that's all done. Um, we'll go to flight plan, we'll put in our departure airport. Boarding's already complete, better get a, a move on here. Now, is there a way in Navigraph of bringing up your flight plan? So I can show it to you here, because the only way I can other, otherwise think of doing it is to show you uh, on here, so... OFP. That, that's the routing, so I can sort of switch between the two, but uh, if it was available to show on Navigraph, that would be a great help for for me. Uh, oh, no, there we are. I can do. Oh, perfect. Minimums, I did a thing. Minimums, minimums, approaching minimums. Perfect. Uh, James Trench, thanks for the 21 months as a member. Oh, good, I was about to have a shower. The captain's about to warm up the hair dryers. <laughs> By the time you're finished, we'll, we'll hopefully have the engines up and running. James, try to get you nice and dry. <laughs> Not too burnt. Thanks for the uh, continued support, member, buddy. Appreciate it. Right, we're in Grazen. Low G, accept. And then it's list. Uh, no, it's not. It's menu, departure. It's going to be an Ibiri 4 Golf off. I only run my. It's 1 6 center. So 1, enter. And a Beery 4 Golf is also one. Enter. No transition, so that should be all we need. So go back to the flight plan. Uh, we'll check all the waypoints match. Remember, there's no ND or anything to display the routing. We just have to check the routing on this. Uh, so next page. Oh no, number five is literally the next point after a Beery. So it's going to be direct to Nakam. So I'll type that directly. So line select key. Uh, Nakam. Ah, what's happened? I saw November Alpha to start with. November Alpha, Kilo, Uniform, Mike. There we are, accept. After Nakam, it's direct to Urkia. Echo, Romeo, Kilo, India, Romeo. Enter, 
accept. After Erkia, we're going to select an airway. So we select list airway from Erkia. Lima 608's number one. And it's going to be to. Uh, is it Kempton Compton or something like that? Kilo Papatango? Can't remember. Kilo Papatango. Next. Next. There it is. 30. Number 30. There we are. So it's just okay, a Kogel. And then uh, Kilo Papatanga. And then the arrival. So for the arrival, it's uh, not list, it's menu. Arrival. Uh, runway 10. Oh, oh no, I've got to select the uh, airport first. So back to flight plan. Ah, what have I done? No, I don't want that. Uh, Lima Sierra Zulu Romeo. And you're so used to the 737 FMS, it's a bit fiddly when you when you jump into another one. So menu arrival, it should now detect the arrival. So it's going to be runway one zero. Enter the arrival. Uh, Kilo Papa to Tango three. Ah, you see, yeah, because I've got an outdated database. It's a three hotel. It's now a four hotel. There's probably been a subtle change. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Not nothing too much. It'll be ILS Oscar, I guess one zero. Number one, there is a transition. Yeah, the sit or transition. Perfect. So we're going to probably enter a hold at sit or the published arrivals enter the hold and then and then fly outbound. So there we are, Kempton. Thanks, Edo. Right. Um, let's just check the routing. Previous page. Right. So firstly, the sit. We're going to taxi out runway one six center. So it, there's no pushback off this stand. It's a self positioning stand. So start the engines. Right turn onto Delta, right turn again, and then we'll go full length runway 16 uh, center. The surface wind is 1604, so the wind is straight down the runway by four knots. Let's have a little look at this SID. We've got to be careful here because we've got an expired database. So it's conditional clearance, straight ahead 2700, which is coded. Right turn Whiskey Golf 607, max 205 knots. So we've got to make sure we comply with that speed. That's going to be good for us because we need to ensure we comply with the miss. Uh, the minimum climbing gradient. So if we do 205 knots, uh, let's call it 200 for cash, um, based off our climb gradient, we'll, we'll see what the aircraft gives us. We need 7.7%. .7%. So at 200 knots, 7.7%. .7, we need to be doing 1500 feet per minute to comply with the minimum climbing gradient, which is, that's what it will, it's about 2000 feet, isn't it, in the 146, I noticed, with full power in the climb. So we're going to comply with that gradient, but we must not accelerate to 250. I want to ensure that we've got this climb gradient. And you can see it, it lowers to 6% below 2700 anyway. And if you can't comply with it, you'd have to do this longer departure anyway. So yeah, we've got to comply with that. We'll keep going until we get above 9000 feet. So I'm actually going to keep the speed back at 205 knots. Once we get to 9,000 feet, I'll accelerate to 250 and we'll maintain that speed to ensure that we comply with the, these climb gradients. Uh, clearance will be by ATC, so what I'm going to do is there's no ATC, it's just set 9,000 feet. So we're happy with the uh, that departure. Whiskey Golf 6 7 it's to a beery, and it all matches. The tracks and distances are all good. 244, 244, 18 miles, 18 miles, perfect. So it does match, which is a good start. And we'll just set 9 to 0. Was it nine, no, it's 9 1,000 feet. The transition altitude is 10,000 feet here. 9,000 feet. Ah, fiddly. Perfect. So we've, we've discussed the SID to the climb gradients. Um, the course is going to be 164 initially, and then it's RNAV, so we'll just leave the heading and courses set as they are. We'll set uh, Grats, which is 16.2. 16.2, and 16.2. Active this side. Perfect, so that's all uh, tuned, and we've got the DME here. Why have we not got it that side? Oh, I've got to turn the DME on. I think I've got to push this, haven't I? Oh, how do I get DME on as well for NAV1? I remember this, isn't it? you got to push or pull. How do I get it round to DME? Because I haven't got it showing the DME distance. Uh, oh, New Sky is working again. Interesting. Ah, well, in that case, we'll get it all fired up. Uh, if anyone knows how to turn on DME on Nav 1, that'd be great. Uh, let me just try and fire up New Sky then. Oh, scheduled maintenance of New Sky. Ah, yeah, it doesn't seem to be coming up with any errors though. All right, well, let's let's try and start it then. There it is, scheduled off in ten minutes. So 
I bet it won't let me know because it's within 10 minutes. Oh no, it's all good. Oh cool, thanks for that, um, uh, Andy. There we are. Well, this, the flight's being logged. We can minimise that now. Um, knob on the left third position from clockwise. One, two, three. On the nav one panel. Oh! There we are. Ah, it took a while for the screen to come up. So, on, in the hold position, yes. There we are, we've got to do me now. Great, thank you. Um, uh, second. <laughs> thank you. Perfect. Right, we've discussed the taxi, we've discussed the SID, and we've loaded up the FMC. Just got to do the fuel page. Uh, and we'll take a little bit of extra fuel, because we might be doing a circle to land. Just, just 15 minutes, there's no ATC events. So, so that's all up and running. Uh, I think... Should be matching. So zero fuel weight, 30, 33.3. Yep, we've got that loaded. 33.304. Gross weight, 37.315. 37.2. That's fine. So fuel on board minimum 4014. This is showing 4011. So as a minimum, we take 42. This burns pretty much the same as the 737, slightly less. So I'll, I'll call it an extra 50. Let's call it 600 kilos extra. So if I put 46, let's call it 47. That should keep us. Uh, just give me a little bit of time to mess around if I have to go around or anything. So, uh, four seven. Uh, each wing's going to be two three fifty. So, we'll go to the fuel page. Load two three fifty here. Uh, aircraft fuel two three five zero. Enter two three five zero. Enter. There we are. So we should have two thrift, two three fifty aside. Looks good in the gauges, just under two and a half aside there, and it's showing four seven. Perfect. That's all good. And this will be all populated as we fly on route. Uh, VNAV information. We do it after top of, uh, top climb. I think we're I think we're all good there. I hope I've not forgotten anything. Perfect. Right. Let's do the performance. I'm going to use full power all day because I have no accurate performance data. Certainly, anything I don't know how to use. Um, so TMS. We'll go to power here. Just pre power it up, just get rid of Jim's control column. So power on. Look at the temperature preset as well, that's quite cool. Go to test. Note that on hold it will keep the selected DME frequency that was in the display at the time. If you change it, the DME won't go to new frequency. Oh really? Oh cool. Almighty Snark didn't these are great facts. One him one minute to enable a warm up. So the only way to update the DME is to go back to off and then back to over uh, hold again. Is that the only way to update it? That's what, so if I was to, to change the frequency, I'd have to go to off again, and then straight to hold, and I guess it would update then. Silly machine. Right. TMS should be all updated. And test is complete, so I have to press it again. Oh no, oops. So, TMS is done, powered on. We'll set the outside air temperature at T-Ref, which is done automatically, which is great. It's 26 degrees. Uh, take off TMS, press arm. Uh, set the climb temperature, target TMS, so 82, that's fine, I'll just leave it to the default ones, and take off speed to verify. So we're going to use, now, we're going to use flap 18 here for our first takeoff, but our, uh, when we take off later from out and right, we're going to go flap 30, because it's a very short runway there, uh, which is going to have a rubbish effect on our performance, but we'll, we'll maybe flap 24, we'll see, but we'll use flap 18 to start with, so I'm going to press this, uh, set all my bugs for me, 882, speed should be updated as well, and the V speeds, fantastic. So that's done, uh, can be done automatically, and then we turn off the TMS system. Perfect, uh, MCP flight directors are on, frequencies are set, uh, nav radios are set, heading and courses are set, 9,000 feet stop altitude, RMI HSI. We'll, we'll use, we will use our nav for departure because we want to make sure we stay on our lateral routing so our nav is selected uh, even though I think the SID the initial turn is based off DME. oh no it's not it's based off a of climbing to a height so we can definitely use our nav function um, pre-flight checklist is complete now we're ready for the engine start guys so there's no ATC I'll just double check nope uh, GSX is good we're due out in three minutes so that's looking excellent uh, so we'll put the AC pump on which is here. Uh, retract and close the air stairs, which I think the number one is done. We'll get the uh, external power disconnected as well. Oh crap. Oops, my bad. I forgot to put on the APU bus. Uh, quick external power. 
<laughs> I forgot to put the APU generator on. There we are. Does that trip anything? I hope not. Oh dear. Completely my fault. We're on APU power now. Disconnect the ground power. Disconnect the chocks. And uh, let's GSX request engine start. So prepare for pushback and departure. How do you do GSX just engine start on stand? No, I just guess it's re prepare for pushback and departure. There's no tug, is there? So maybe it just knows already. Hey, how do I? Where's the little guy? I press the prepare for pushback and departure. Let's uh, carry on with the rest of the, the checks here. So AC pump was on. Uh, oh no, then you turn it back off again. That's just to retract the stairs. Come off. Uh, beacon light on. APU air off. Really? Did the engine start? Did I do that last time? Uh, where is the APU air off? Oh, there's so many switches! There we are. APU off. Packs 1 and 2 off. Fuel pumps all on. Start power to normal. Start master on, and then we start the engines. Four, three, two, one. Okay. Uh, perfect. Well, I told GSX I'm ready to go. Uh, oh, have a good trip. Option five, well, I guess. What? What's GSX? Have a good trip. What's going on with GSX? And it looks all broken. Boarding departure. Why is it overloading itself? I, I, I'll just start the engines. <laughs> <laughs> right, engine starts electric. Thank you, APU air to reduce the load. Got you, got you, got you. I'm thinking, I'm thinking 737s on it. Right, clear prop. There's James. He needs the to dry off. So N2 10 percent, wasn't it? Oh, I'm already above that. Fuel on. Nobody <laughs> stuck. You're messing around until it was warmed up. Poor electronics need a, few, uh, a hot few seconds to get all warmed up on your inputs. Ah, I see. And again, when can I start the next engine? At what point's the earliest? Is it some sort of starter cutout? I think I'm meant to be monitoring things up here as well. No Mighty starts a few videos online from NZ and New Zealand pilots flying this aircraft. Uh, it's a joy to see the flight procedures, yes. Probably making a real dog's dinner of it. <laughs> Starting to just sort of up here get. In. Ooh, oh, what have I just turned off now? I don't know. Uh, you get ignition one and two on. Starter operating. Fuel goes on. Just want to see at what point engine ignition comes off. Oh. There's light up. Somewhere around 60% N2. Okay. Oh, it must be N1, 60% N1. I'll wait until the ignition lights extinguish. There we go. Because once it's no longer igniting. Ah! When it's, when it's no longer igniting, the ignition is sort of self-sustaining, so it seems like a good logical time to do it. Perfect, 2-10%. Restart GSX, request pushback. No, I, I don't need to push back Silvery from here, it's anyway. That's probably why it's confused, It's a, there's no pushback off this stand. So what I'm going to do is actually... How do I terminate it? I'll, I'll do that. Yeah, that's sort of... I think I've killed it. Once the starter line goes off... Which one's that? Oh, starter operating. Okay, cool. I see drawing the power is cool. 
So yeah, first flight, 50 minutes, grants to Alton Rhine. Steep approach, very short runway in uh, there as well, about 13, 1400 meters. Definitely need this aircraft. Uh, hi Martin, uh, Mark Cassini, hope you're doing well. Uh, Martin, yep, yeah, the igniter and start to run longer than required for safety reasons. If something goes wrong, it will just dry motor and you lose all explosive vapors, pretty much like any turbine now. Very good. As long as they don't blow any engines up. Oops, helps I get some fuel into the engine, doesn't it? It's max motor. In. It's such a stubby looking thing, isn't it? I mean, this was built and designed in the 80s, wasn't it? Nearly 40 years old. The landing gear design is so cool. Perfect. And it looks like four good engine starts. Excellent. Uh, so, start selector, we can move to the off position. Start master switch to off. Engine anti-ice as required, not required. So we'll turn them now off. Generator 1 and 4 on. They are on. APU air on. So you leave the APU running and APU air on for takeoff. Packs 1 and 2 on. Uh, brake fans to the auto position. Which is up here, I think. There we are, brake fans to auto. Um, engine 2 and 3 hydraulic pumps on. Which are here. So there's the yellow and green hydraulic pressure building. Hopefully low pressure will extinguish. There it goes. Um, AC, pu AC pump on, PTU on. I think it's just for the takeoff. Uh, heaters on. Uh, TMS power on. Set to take off and transponder mode selected to TA. Minimums, minimums, approaching minimums. 2000. Perfect. Uh, that's it. Flaps next. Flap 18. Uh, Martin, hope you're doing well, my friend. 47 months as a member. That's an incredible uh, period of time. In fact, how many years is that going to be? Uh, nearly four. It's just a four years, isn't it? So thank you very much. Nice weather you got there, sir. Uh, lovely here in the sim. Not so nice here in the UK. Uh, can't believe I've been around for 47 months. Sending you more blue skies ahead of you. Thank you very much. Yeah, the weather for our stream today is absolutely perfect. Not so nice in the UK, so maybe I should have stuck to that. But the, the scenery today should be spectacular. Excellent. Uh, awesome. That's all done. Taxi set next is... Uh, sorry, flaps are set next is taxi out. So, taxi lights on. And just check the rudder and on trim is centred, which it should be. Uh, I'll release the brakes. Just do a quick config check. There you are. No config warning. And we're already moving off stance. So, self-positioning. So, no thrust on the inboard turning side engine, so only on the outboard, so that will slow you down. Excellent. Straighten up here. Should be on that arrow, really. Very nice scenery. Oops, I forgot this master warning system. I don't exactly know how it works. <laughs> right then. I should probably unicom, shouldn't I? Make sure I've actually got it tuned up. Perfect. Uh, where are we, Grats? Uh, Grats traffic, Alpaca 1, Charlie Hotel, taxi to runway 1 6 centre for departure to west. Well, it's not ignited, start to terminate to either. 40 or 45 percent N2 RPM automatically as applicable. Start abort is moving the fuel levers back and turning off the start master switch. Roger. Random Microsoft flights and vehicles all over the place. The modelling of aircraft on on VATSIM is great. Oh, that is a static one, I believe, but uh, I think that's someone on VATSIM. And that's static. And a collision. Right, let's do the EVA 4 takeoff checklist. So, flaps and 
to trim is set, config we've checked, continuous ignition not required, uh, flight instruments are checked, trims are all set for takeoff, config we've done, seats and harnesses, nav aids, takeoff briefing speed as well. Cabin cool. Excellent. Shrub, it is my intention to take part in Cross the Pond. Uh, I'll have to see what slots are available. I, I've been so busy I didn't actually register an interest. Regardless, I will stream that day. Because uh, I have sort of... I'm off. Uh, so I'll, I'll endeavour to take part. Even if it's a not so popular route. Cool, cabin crew ready. So I'm just going to do my operators before takeoff check. This is my final check. So config we've checked in this aircraft. Flaps we have 18. Snap trim is set for takeoff. I just keep it in the green range. In fact, last time it felt very nose heavy, so I'll give it a little bit of nose trim up. And departures. Uh, so the air conditioning is set. So we leave the APU running for takeoff in the 146. So the APU air on. And uh, we'll then configure after takeoff. Speeds are set for takeoff as well. V1 is. Uh, 128 VR. Oh no, sorry, I don't know what V1 is. We'll call it 128. 128, 128, VR is 134. The departure is the Abiri 4 Golf, so we're going to climb straight ahead 2,700 feet. The mist. I say mist. The minimum climb gradient initially is 7.7%, so we need to maintain 200 knots for 1560 feet per minute. Minimum rate of climb. Once we get to 200 knots, it's 1560 feet per minute, so we'll aim for 2,000. Uh, NADP, we'll treat it like NADP 2, so we'll accelerate 1,000 feet above the ground. And uh, any problems will we'll fly south or southeast where there's no terrain. Reviewed. Cabin is secure. Checks complete. So just before we line up, we'll do the before takeoff configuration. So landing lights can come on. Strobe lights can come on as well. Uh, TMS is set. Takeoff mode N1 reference is shown, which is 92.1. Uh, master warning system, there's no lights apart from the uh, brake fan selected on, which we know about. Weather radar, we can turn on, albeit not modelled. I think that's on. Uh, I'll put it on weather, no, it's, it's not modelled anyway. Uh, so that's set, and go around, go around mode engage, so you press the little go around button, check your FMAs, which are here. There we are, we've got go around engaged. And uh, we're ready for takeoff now, so we'll just make sure no one's on the final. Looks all clear, and on the other side. Perfect. Let's line up. We can break it off already. And crash traffic out back at one Charlie Hotels, take off runway 16 centre. Thanks for tuning in anyway this Saturday. Great to see over 200 people here on the afternoon. If you enjoyed the stream, don't forget to like it. I've got some great 146 streams already. But if you want to learn how to fly this aircraft, may I recommend you do not watch me. <laughs> Perfect. So remember, climbing straight ahead 2,700 feet, it's only 1,500 feet above the ground, right turn to Whiskey Golf 607. So Arnav, this will, we we'll just need to follow the HSI, so it should sequence each waypoint nicely. Flight time about 50 minutes, are we cruising at flight level 280? Yeah, it's a great little aeroplane. Perfect. Right, tokens in chat. Stop the timer. Lifetime, it's 15.12.00. Perfect. Should reset my cameras, guys. Hold on. There we are. Perfect. Why is that? Oh, hold on. Camera issues. There we go. Let's go. Can't remember the takeoff. It's initially 50%. So if he says stabilise, does he? TMS sets takeoff. There we are. There we are. Power set, N1G. Takeoff for us set indications normal. Speed alive, both sides. Perfect. 80 knots. Check. Release the forward pressure. It's just because that's what I do on the 737-80. Lovely day here, no wind. V1. Rotate. Yeah, I'll just ignore the little tug on V2. the runway. And we're airborne. Positive rate of climb. 
because that worked. Sometimes you have to cycle it twice. It's all in trim nicely. Yeah, pick the gears up. Check outside. Perfect. So waiting to 2,700 feet. Let's turn it down slightly. There we are. Good rate to climb, but I am going to have to lower the nose to accelerate. There's a thousand feet above the ground, so lowering the nose. Let's do about 500 feet per minute. Okay, remember, we're going to fly this initial turn at 205 knots. Just flown over the uh, VOR. Watch that rate to climb. It's very sensitive to pitch. Let's just trying to find that attitude. Again, I don't know what to do to get the flight directors to command. Oh yeah, I need to select IAS, don't I? But I think you can't have the flight director set that. The FTO, safe height speed, select flaps up. That's it, so flaps up, there's 2,700, there's the right turn. So I'm just going to pitch to fly 200 knots now. So pitch up a little bit more. Remember we need at least 1,500 feet per minute to meet the climb grade, which is fine. Just doesn't a bit late with that turn. Just get maintain 200 knots. Roll wings level, just get back on course. I'm just looking at the HSI, just, just down here. Beautiful day here. Perfect, so we're all in trim. Oh, look at that. Then when it's smooth like this, this is, this is exactly how it flies. Right, let me just get the autopilot in. So that's down here. Make sure to have it turned off. Command. And we'll just engage LNAV. Just going to go pitch. Deselect VS and pitch. That's fine. Actually, I'll go IS hold. It's going to be far more efficient. I'm pretty much still doing. Yeah, 210 knots. That's fine. There we are. And I'm going to carry on climbing because it is at 9,000. Oh, yeah, max 205. Yeah, I'm doing about 206, 207. That's okay. Max 265 next. So I'm just going to wait until I'm above 9,000 feet before I do 250 knots. So we're going to go straight up to our cruise level now, which is flight level 280. Please keep climbing. And I'll do the after takeoff checklist uh, here. So after takeoff checklist for the 146. So gears up, flaps are up, retracted, autopilot's engaged, engine 1 to 4 on. APU air off, sync press. I'm going to set the uh, target and climb to 92%. Uh, master TMS on number one. AC pump and PTU off. Perfect. Uh, cabin cool. Just to release them to start the service. There we are. I have to take off checklist complete. So you can see why. You need to keep this climb going. Uh, got to be at or above 9,000 feet at uh, Abiru, which we're going to achieve. Even this aircraft can climb okay. Uh, so there we go. And once we're above 9,000 feet, I'll, I'll uh, accelerate to 250. We're going to keep 250 during the climb. So climb gradients, you've got to know your aircraft really. 7.7%, .7%, we're doing 200 knots. Got to achieve, you've got to do minimum 1560, and we're doing 2,000. So, you know, this climb grade is probably about... 10 11 percent, but you'll never see anything as high as that. Cool, there's 9,000 feet. So, I'll just show you again if you missed the stream the other day. What you can do is deselect indicated airspeed to go to pitch mode and use your trim to, to set your, your rate of climb. So, I'm going to trim now, trim down now, just, just flicking the trim with my left thumb here, just to set a thousand feet per minute so I can accelerate to 250 knots. Met that, that uh, gradient. There we are. So, one more flick. You can see why you've got to achieve it. Look, that terrain there. We'll bug 250. And once we're doing 250, I shall go back to indicated airspeed hold. So, I always, when I fly, I try to do it as realistically as possible, trying to fly with all the grains. There we are, waiting for the on target speed, then back to indicated airspeed hold, and then we'll do the pre cruise checks. set standard as well. Just pass the transition altitude. 
I'm so standard now. Come on, give me 250, you can do it! <laughs> yeah, you gotta trust your, trust your aircraft to we'll be doing this in IMC. Let's just clear this terrain here. There we are, 250, back to indicated airspeed hold. Much safer mode, pitch, pitch speed stable. Cool, pre cruise checks then coming up. So, passing 10,000 feet, lights off. Uh, we'll release the crew, which we've done. Fast the seatbelt sign can come off. Pressurisation. So diff is three psi. Cabin altitude's four. Oof, don't like that. Four thousand. But it, I think this is the way it pressurises. That's all set. Lights are good. APU is. Oh look, and that's why we've lost an APU off. Ah no. Start master switch. Be careful. APU off. Pressurization is set, seatbelts, checks complete. And I think on the recall. Perfect. Uh, Skate on the EPA, you still running? Yeah, I just forgot to turn it off. You leave it running for takeoff, and then you turn it off as part of the after takeoff checklist. There we are, we're off the, the SID now. Uh oh. APU. Uh, I think it's just part of the shutdown process. It's all good. Cool. So uh, SID's terminated now. Just go to the airway charts, so you be aware of your mooras. So look at the highest terrain here, 15,000 en route. If you had a rapid depressurisation, don't go any lower than 15,000, otherwise you're going to hit something. Good to be aware of that. There we are, live time, live weather. What a lovely day. Hope the sounds all good. Not too quiet, not too loud. Simon C, nice to see you here. 146 plus challenging Alpine airports. Exactly, yeah, I thought we'd do something a bit different today. Uh, Astro I think you forgot to set the yaw dampers. I did, I noticed that. Uh, you also need to push the button near the bottom left of the pencil. Yeah, I did that pre-flight and somehow it turned off, I think, so I'm not sure why. Uh, Simon, see the VIM actually, or the VIM active in regularly flies at 146 into Bolzano, Aosta, both less than 1500 metres with steep approaches. That's the ultimate experience of the 146, very cool. Uh, all my stock, it doesn't have an auto throttle load, so keep that in mind. Yes, so I'm keeping an arm I thrust. I think 90, 92% is a good climb thrust setting. I'll just add a little bit more. I know you can increase it. Uh, Almighty start, the indicated airspeed is for the vertical coupling and is something the autopilot adjusts with the pitch angle, so you use it for climb performance. Very good. So, yeah, similar to level change in the 737, I think. Uh, gadget badges is very reassuring to hear. Ah, no, and uh oh, from the flight deck within 15 seconds of each other. <laughs> Brilliant. Hope you're doing well, Fly Walnuts. Some lovely places to fly into today. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, good point, Cret 63. Yeah, maybe when I trip the power, uh, it trips your damper. It will on the 737, funny enough. Very nice. Well, ditch these charts. As I said, we won't have a huge amount of time in the cruise. Once we get there, we'll update the cruise. Uh, or VNAV to send path, and we'll talk about the arrival into uh, Alton Ryan. Starred ones. No, I don't know how to. Anyway, there's arrival. Uh, it's going to be a Kempton 4 hotel approach. There's only published approaches on the runway 10. It's 4 degrees. Very steep. Where did I see 4 degrees? It's offset by 0.8. 4 degrees. There we are. 4 degrees ILS. So it's nice and steep for us today. Parking. It's only got 3 stands. <laughs> so it's a good job there's no vats of event going on. Hasso Basso, is this the last of the great British built airlines? Yeah, I'd, I'd say it is. There's nothing else that's come out of this country since. Nothing at all. Uh, Roy, think of getting the 146, but I have been waiting for the RJ release. If it ever does, yeah, that is coming. I don't know when, uh, just like we'll release it. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's going to be a lot more fitting online. I mean, the UNS FMC, this is now perfect to take online. Just bear in mind you have no displays with your your ND so you've got to be quite aware that it's routing accurately. I'd, I'd grab it. I'd grab it now. And it's on sale. I think the sale ends today. So you can pick it pick the 146 I think it's just 39, 40 quid. Steve, can you wave to my friend who lives in Clarkenfurt on the way over? Yes. I think we're actually gonna go yeah look good timing, look at that. We're literally right about to go right over the top of it. 
Klagenfurt is just off to the left hand side. I did consider it as a departure point. There we are. Down in the valley. There's Klagenfurt. There's the airport. The text just look a bit blurry. Okay. I think I've got it turned down quite a bit, but it looks absolutely fine for me. Astrid, between this Concorde and the VC-10, Britain's com Britain, uh, Britain comes up with quite the quad jets. Yeah, I know. Oh, I'd love to have a VC-10 in, in Microsoft Flight Simulator X plane. Uh, flying boomerang, that's good timing. How's the UFMS? Great, I like it. Uh, it's, for those of you familiar with the Fly Jason Dash 8, same same FMS. So you can put your lateral routing in here. You can fly on nav approaches, just your vertical pitch mode. You might have to use VS. That's all. But you can still fly fly on of approaches to, to L nav minimum. So we're still maintaining 250 knots. Our Mach number will increase as we maintain a fixed indicated airspeed in the climb. So we're now doing Mach decimal 5, 5. We'll accelerate to Mach decimal 6, 8 when we get to flight level 280. There's the Alps. So as we go northwest from Klagenfurt. Uh, obviously the highest peaks are near Chambéry, so this is where um, Mont Blanc is, the Matterhorn, all those areas here. The This is where the... It's, we're basically flying the whole length of the Alps today. Second sector takes us to here, Chamb uh, Chambéry, just down there. This is the only bit we sort of cross it, really. Fantastic. Almighty oh, Snark, imagine RJ with two CFM. It's not too much, too much for them, really. Uh, Yankee Fox, the 146 definitely feels more unique. The RJ looks like a 4 engine 737. Lots of similar instruments by the looks of things. Yeah, and the FMS is similar as well. The reflection of the sun there. That little lake. Very cool. That's very realistic. There we go. You know, Snuck, 146 perfect to do some old school ADFER approaches. Did the London City one last year, was quite chuffed. The little nav map showed an almost exact copy of the approach chart route. Oh, very cool. Well done. Uh, free scratch, are you concerned about drift downs and things flying over the Alps in real life, or is the single engine cruise altitude quite high? Great question. Yeah, in the, in the 737, yeah, unless you are using engine and wing anti ice and you're incredibly heavy you're not going to have any issues in Europe with drift down after an engine failure uh, in the Alps. You know, usually you can typically maintain 20,000 feet plus uh, single engine uh, with drift down. And in that time, let's say you're at 37,000 feet, to get down to 20,000 feet, you'll have traveled 150 miles because uh, you've got one engine on max continuous thrust and it will just slowly drift down. And with, with Europe and, and when you fly just in Europe, by that time you're already diverted or chosen an alternate airport and that time and actually started descending quicker anyway. Oh yeah, the Ever RG, yeah, it has the Collins MCP, same as the NG, very cool. <laughs> and RJ with two CFMs, isn't that an A380? Yeah, probably is, isn't it? <laughs> Gotta look at the climb performance now. God, it's pants. We've been airborne for 15 minutes, 23,000 feet. 100, 100 passengers I took today, both sectors are 100 passengers. Uh, new Sky seems to be working. Anyway, which is good. Look, even Microsoft Flight Sim has weird ortho tile thing. Ortho tile issues. issues. Very cool. I find the 146 engine is quite monotonous, like that tone. To turn, the sim has to turn right down in flight in, in the 146. It's down to 33%. Where on the ground I had it set to 80. Oh, does it? The chart suggests converting at Mach 0.6. Okay. Is there a Mach hold in the climb on this? Oh, there is. Perfect. So what I'll do is we get to 0.6 I'll convert but we're, we're almost at 28,000 feet anyway oh Jonathan Woodshire an alert light 
Looks okay. So far, so good. Right, there's point six. So what I'll do, I'll convert it to mag hold. So you should see it starts slowly pitching up a bit more now. The indicated airspeed will change now. It says it holds mag. By the DME panel. Ah, alert. Ah. Is that because it's out of range, maybe, of the previous DME station? I don't know if there's anything I can tune on route here, because it's all RNAV routing. Oh, yeah, the Kilo Papa Tango. Let's tune that. 1084. Should be in range. Oop, not yet. I think you've now turned it completely off. Yeah, uh, turn the DME off. This should at least, in this mode, they have the needle point towards the VOR once I get higher. Yeah, Fox was watching a 146 documentary and it suggested the wing was developed from the data from Airbus. Given the age, I suppose it would uh, just be around the birth of the 320. Not sure how true that is, though. Oh, interesting. So that's going to help our rate of climb now. Flying a fixed Mach number. So point 0.6, you can see the indicator there, so it's slowly dropping. This is over that. The Mora, we're about 15,000 feet over here. So we have to go down quickly, just bear that in mind. So, gradual transition. So, so they're using big maps, don't they, obviously, Microsoft. So I guess when they stitch it together, they have these sort of lines. But it's great that you have a bit of snow here, and it, it, it does change throughout the season. Sorry for switching gears quickly. Roy Sol, okay, quick question. You have to just um, spendo. <laughs> what would you get? F28 or the 146? You only have enough for one. Ooh, that's a good question. I think I'd go for the 146. The 146 is a bit more versatile than the F28. Um, you, and also you get the UNS FMC. So this gives you the option to fly online networks and fly on. You can, you can fly modern airways. The F28 is older. Uh, so you're, you're quite reliant on VOR navigation in that. Uh, does it come with the default FMC? I, I think the times we've streamed in it, it's only twice, we've always flown old school, gone to parts of the world quite remote, which rely on conventional navigation. Um, but uh, yeah, that, out of the two, if I had to choose, that would be the 146. Not to discredit the F-28, it's a great add-on. Uh, it depends what order of flying you, you want to do. It does come with GNS, okay. So the choice is yours, Roy. You get it. What are you going to go for? The 146 of the F28. There we are. There's 280. And what I'll do, I'll bug decimal 68 now. So I'll accelerate to that speed. Go over here to flight plan. Well, not is it nav. V nav. There we are. We'll set the target rate to 2,000 feet a minute, like we did the other day. And uh, top of set 90 miles away. Okay, cool. Simon, you've got the 146 F28 RJ. My choice is the 146 and the to be released. Uh, oh, yeah, when just like release the 7100, that would be a cool aircraft to fly as well. So we'll leave the hairdryer set to. Uh, this thrust setting, uh, and then we'll go to... is it TGT now? That's it. And now you can see the TMS is sort of sinking the engines up. Uh, and then we set that in the cruise when we, we get to our speed, uh, set TGT to 600, so we'll just keep accelerating for now. Which takes absolutely ages. Yeah, if they added UNS-1 to the F-28, I'm sh Is there any F-28s flying today? I doubt it. But maybe the latter variants, or if there are any still, are utilising UNS. Makes sense. We'll just wait until we get to decimal 6-8, then we'll reduce the thrust as we... <laughs> it's burning up here. Fantastic news, eh? Very nice. Oh yes, so I was going to install FSUIPC and have the overlay up here, but I went on the FSUIPC website 
click download and it's got a Trojan virus on it. <laughs> so I was like, mm, no, Windows was like, delete, delete, delete. So I'm like, okay, I'm not downloading that. I don't know what's going on if that site's been hacked or something. And so I was like, not downloading that. So yeah, still no overlay in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Yeah, Yankee, that would be very niche, the 111, yeah. There are decimal 6.8, so we'll slowly reduce thrust now to TGT. 600. Make sure that's not too slow. That should do. I feel that's reducing speed too quickly now. Yes, yeah, so that's reducing speed quickly, so maybe I set a higher TGT. That's what I did last stream, wasn't it? Cruise set TGT to 600 degrees. Maybe I'll go here to start. Yeah, that was definitely going to slow down. So that's 660. Sort of staring at this, seeing if it moves. Okay, keep an eye on that. You guys monitor my speed as well. Let me know if I get too slow in chat. <laughs> Perfect. Right then, uh, let's have a look at this arrival uh, into Altentrine. This airport's wicked as we fly over the Alps here. So we're going to continue on route towards Kila Papatanga, which is the arrival. And let's check this carefully because the uh, flight plan got an expired nav database here, forgot to update it. So we're going to go over here to fly plan and step through it. So starting at Kilo Papatango, Zulu Romeo 612 at above 7,000 feet. So I guess I'm going to how to find the altitudes. No, that's just overall data. I don't think you can, just, you can see it. I just want to see what it's aiming for. And now, what did I do last stream to have the altitudes appear in here? Ah, I did a thing. There we are. At above 7,000. At above 6,000 at Lagos. Then it's direct to Amir's. And Amir's to Sitor. And Sitor... Now, let me know in chat what you'd like me to do. I can either, after Lagos, self-position downwind and you can self position so long as you stay above the MSA and that sector is actually 5,300 so I could so long as I stay north of the airfield the extended sense line self position at 6,000 feet turn left and intercept the ILS or I could do the procedural arrival via Sitor it's going to be well it's between a parallel and offset entry 50-50 really uh, do that entry and then fly inbound Sitor because Sitor is the final approach point uh, here. So I could do the procedural arrival, enter the hold, and then fly outbound, uh, which would be the sort of safer way of doing it, or self positioning, which is it's always a fool's game, especially in IMC at night. Uh, so, so we'll do, yeah, okay, we'll fly, well, let's do the procedural arrival. So that means I've got to program a hold in the FMC, which I know it can do. How? <laughs> so Sitor. Is it OV fly? No, I don't think it is. Oh no, I've got the, I've got the. I have the instruction manual here. Let me just check the speed just to make sure I'm not stalling. No, that's okay. It's holding it quite nice. It got a bit fast. Just take a little bit of thrust off. So let me just get the menu, uh, the menu, <laughs> the manual out. For holding in the UNS. Oh, I don't have to do it old school. <sighs> Heading page. Aha, it's in the manoeuvre section. So, go to nav. Okay, nav heading. Command heading. Aha! How do I do this at a certain waypoint, though? This is going to be fun. So two, is that our current heading? Yeah, that's our current track or heading. 293. Uh, 
passing. I don't know if anyone will move a page. Aha! So, press manoeuvre. Okay. Holding different. Holding different. Hold fix. So that holding fix name was. Sitor. Just uh, align this here. Ah. How do I get it to face north? Is it Sitor? Yep, Sitor. So Sitor, next page. 12. Enter. Ah! Information! Okay. Having a look at the chart, guys. What do I need to do? Left hand, right hand turns. What's the inbound course, outbound course? What's the inbound course and turn direction? You tell me. I'll carry on reading the manual. <laughs> So, excellent, 097 left hand turn, so let's type that in, direction, 097, turn, do I have to type in left, ah, there we are, left, so 098, sorry, 097, oh, cover crew wants something, oh, no, inbound, ah, Ah, is that right? Oh, what's happened? No, I want I want zero nine seven inbound. Ow! How do I? Yeah, and left. Okay, zero nine seven inbound, left hand turns, and one minute legs. Yeah, that's fine. So arm hold. I think that's correct. It's going to be 097 inbound. Right, arm holes. Uh, okay, I think I've done it. God, it's a good job I'm not on ATC. There we are. Amaris. Oh. I don't like how it's blank. Hold. Sit all. Okay, let's see what happens when we get there. <laughs> and then we can set this to hold at 5,000 feet. That's fine. We'll go down to 5,000 feet, level off, hold, and then we, we can, well, we're inbound, fly onto the ILS, and the platform's 5,000 anyway. So VNAV should command a nice descent, Somebody as as follow accurately all the way down. Uh, I think the cabin crew wanted me, didn't they? Oops, probably not. What's really cool is you can go out here, look, and you can cancel pilot call them. That's just to kill the, call the flight deck, isn't it? Cabin call. There you go. Ah, no. <laughs> Cancel. <laughs> oh, I've just been overtaken. Right. Uh, cool. Let's have a look at the rest of your arrival then. So the star we're happy with. Uh, speed's perfect. Just want to make sure we're not too from top. So yeah, 15 miles from top of descent. Short sectors. So Kempton. We've already got the DME for that. Lagos. Sitor. Sitor. Enter the hold. Procedural arrival. Uh, we either do an offset or parallel entry. Once we outbound from Sitor, 5,000 feet platform, intercept the ILS. Uh, minimum's 1806. Okay. Uh, RVR. Is this. I guess it'll be Pansop's Cat A or B. So 1500 meters needed. So uh, just remember the height, 1506, just so we get the minimum call. I'm going to set the RA to 500. We wouldn't usually do this, but it just gives you the minimum call in the aircraft. So 500 feet above the ground. I'll just double check the weather, just in case we have to circle. I think it was like down the runway anyway. Uh, so oh. I need to press this. Weather, yeah, variable one knot, cav okay, 22 degrees, QH 1017. It's literally the perfect day. So nice. Uh, cool, performance then. Uh, have a look at this runway, guys. Vacate November 1455. It's not super short. Entry for hold. Oh, oh did I have to select the entry? Ah. Now, how did I get to that menu? Oh, no. Nav. Maneuver. Holding. Uh, oh, yeah. So it's not going to be a direct entry. We'll put. You have to. Yeah, it definitely won't be that. How do I change it to parallel? Uh oh. Too much stuff.
I'm searching in true. Now that makes me think I've got the courses the wrong way around. If it's is it is this automatic? Uh, I'm trying to look at this picture. I think this is automatic, which makes me think it's wrong. Because it's definitely not a direct entry. We're coming from the reciprocal heading. Let me just change this over again. Oh, how craggy. None of the click, none of it's working. Why is that not working? Let's make sure we've still got the hold in. Right, it's got the hold. Ah, Miss my FMC! <laughs> Disarms hold. Right, I need to descend here as well. Ah, I need to, I need to start descent. Right, what's the. First cleared level. Ugh, this is what this is hard. Right, I'll go down to seven thousand. So I'm gonna set seven thousand. Nice speed stable descent mode. Arm. Indicated airspeed hold. Descent on the TMS. So it ensures that you have minimum sixty percent N2. Slowly reduce the thrust. Yeah, maybe disarm hold first. Let's just see what rate of descent I need. 2,250 feet per minute now. Okay, that's about two and a half. Oops, I just realised I never took transponders to TARA. Okay, we've established a descent. Probably a little less thrust than that. Fuel will be fine. God, three tons. We need uh, not much to dive out to Zurich. Right. Let's quickly try and fix this hold. So it's <laughs> flight plan. No. Ah, menu. No, it was flight plan. No. So let's let's start again. So I I can do it manually if not. Manoeuvre. Disarm hold. If I just delete it manually. This is sort of crash territory, like... Uh, yeah, I think that's worked. So let me just delete... I've got double sit all now, so let's delete that. Okay, we're back to square one. We're sit all direct to the Fox Fox. Okay, so let's take our time with this. So it is... Nav, maneuver, holding define, sit all, number 12... Yeah, that's good rate of descent, two and a half thousand feet per minute. Right, so, this is showing, let me just get the manual out. <laughs> Holding. Hold heading page, right, perfect. So the holding pattern can be armed by pressing line select key 5, left which did. The arm hold prompt will change to direct hold prompt. Once holding pattern is armed, the FMC will automatically enter the holding. Uh, which I've done. Um, no, I need to. So before I arm it, I need to set all this up here. So let me just search inbound. Oh, it's literally not coming up with anything inbound. Flies nicely, Brendan. Flies nicely. My FMC programming skills though on this aircraft are not good. So my logic says direct entry zero nine eight, but the entry is direct, which can't be right. Because have a look at the chart. We're coming in off this arrival here. So we're coming in from the east, so it's definitely not a direct entry. It's either parallel or offset. Um, it's it's 180 degrees away from the inbound. Our inbound course from Amris to Sitwa is 277. The inbound course is 097. So by logic, it's logic that inbound is your inbound course, isn't it? 097, hold direction, I think is your outbound track, 277. That has to be inbound. So let me change that to 097. Has to be. Enter. 277, but it's still showing an entry of direct. 
which is not correct. It's not a direct entry. And if you look at this picture, uh, we just need to change that to left. So that picture is correct, but this arrow here is incorrect. So I, so this needs to change automatically. So it's left turn. That actual hold is looking good now. The holding the picture is correct. Turn left. Left turns. Ah, DIR. Yeah, DIR 277. No, 277. Inbound 097. This is incorrect. This is incorrect. Next page. Yeah, good thinking, actually. No, next page isn't working. Previous isn't either. Press the entry line button. Let me just search entry in the manual. Uh, so yeah, I think that's automatic. I think this should change automatically based off all the information. That doesn't do anything pressing that. Let me just search entry. Six matches. No, that's going to do with entering other stuff. Right, to do with holding, there's nothing there. So I think that entry should change automatically based off the information you've given it. But a direct entry, we know, is incorrect. Yeah. Uh, uh, right select key 4 does nothing. Crowd sense okay. Seatbelt sign's coming on. Multitasking! I think I'm just going to have to leave it and see what happens. And if not, just do it manually. Do a parallel entry if not. Or offset doesn't make any difference. <coughs> Sorry, I know you can't see the manual, can you? I don't know why, cry I don't know why my PDF's gone. There we go. Uh... Yeah, it's... Yeah, exactly, Hudson Marco. It's, it's either parallel or teardrop. Right, one degree either side, doesn't matter. Uh, and I've got it all in format. And if you look at the picture... Uh, let me just get rid of the PDF here. Look, the picture's correct on the chart. chart we've got... Uh, Sitor... 097 left hand turns and if you look at the picture here it's correct this arrow is wrong this should be coming in from the other direction and this should change i think in the dash eight this change the entry option changes automatically it automatically works out right this is your this is your track our, our direction is this we're coming in from 277 okay which you look at the chart it is 277 our inboard ca inbound course is 097 inbound 097 the picture here is correct the entry is wrong so i just don't know how to yeah, T or let's try that. No, can't. Can't change this. Now, if I line select key that, that works. If I line select key that, it works. That works. But entry, it doesn't let you change it, which makes me think it should automatically change, which it should do. It should be able to go, right, this is your inbound course, this is your direction. It's this XYZ entry. I think this is possibly. Could be something I don't know. It's stuck on direct. Anyway, let. Let's see what happens, and I, I can't be distracted by it anymore, guys, because look at this, we're, we're already well on the arrival now. Um, so I'll, do, I'll arm it, uh, go back to flight plan, you can see it's in there, let's see what happens when we get there. <laughs> the wings fall off or something, probably. Right, uh, where are we? Um, oh, 250 below 100, so what we'll do now is uh, bug 250. It's been working really nice in the descent, holding the speed, so we'll bug 250 and go back to pitch hold so what I'm going to do is just pitch up to do about a thousand feet per minute maybe maybe 500 just get the speed back to 250 knots so back to indicated airspeed hold uh, where are we? <laughs> approaching Kilo Papatango excellent left next to Zulu Romeo 612 there you go as you saw the chart that was too distracting Time for some manual holding. Yeah, let's uh, single needle tracking only, please. <laughs> There's Kilo Papatango anyway. Um, and the hold is based off Sitor. It's actually based off the ILS DME, so we need to actually follow this entire arrival uh, via RNAV. You know, there's no raw navigation about it. So we're doing well for the descent planning, though. 2,000 feet per minute. We're currently doing 1,000. That's fine because I want to bring the speed back to 250 knots. As soon as we're at 250. Go back to indicated airspeed hold. Just a little bit of speed brake just to help it get to. <laughs> it's so effective. Whee, there you go. Cool. 
And IS holds. I've descended with a little bit of thrust on the hallway, not so efficient, but in this aircraft, no problem. <coughs> Uh, to Michael, holding, uh, working on holding for my uh, eye on the moment, so this stuff is fresh in my eye. Very cool, yeah, very good. It was either, as you said, uh, parallel or offset. It's one degree either side, no one's going to punish you either way. I'm curious to see what the FMC does. If it doesn't do anything it wants to do, what we'll do is probably an offset, because offset I can go, sort of go off 30 degrees to the right. So 277 plus 30, what's that? 307 for a minute, and then left turn, and put me straight in bound to sit or. Cool, uh, I never finished the descent planning and the landing performance. So landing we're going to use full flap, short runway. I'm just going to bug VREF 118, flap 33 and just bug 250 knots again. <coughs> Excuse me. And once we get to Kilo Romeo 612, we'll maintain 7,000. So um, one to go, 1,000 feet per minute is absolutely fine and we're going to indicate it airspeed hold. So let's get the RS tunes now, uh, 10875. Hope you guys are enjoying it though, something different, keeping me on my toes. I always try and do it as realistically as possible within the, the <laughs> within my knowledge range of flying a different aeroplane. 10875, 10875, perfect. So yeah, we've got the DME distance now from the airport, so 25 miles, 8.5, but remember we're going to do the whole entry. We'll set a Q&H now as well, uh, local Q&H, where's my phone, this is where I'm working out, in uh, Alton Ryan is uh, 1017, so sending altitude 7000 feet, Q&H 1017, perfect, oh, nav one knob is off, is it that one? And someone said you have to wait a few seconds, don't you? Course is 097. On to go. So we're just going to add a little bit of thrust now. Just that will. Just a really shallow rate of descent. Ah, so sensitive. Still going to set to the heading, it's uh, Graz. Cool, on to go. That's checked, that's armed as well. Perfect. And what's that lake? It's a famous lake, isn't it? Sorry, remind me. <laughs> Good, so we're on nav based. Uh, remember, we can see all our waypoints. We have. Ah, which is the nicer uh, display? That one I prefer. Perfect. Uh, let me bring up Navigrapher. Well, you've already got it. Perfect. So Zulu Romeo 612. Uh, how do you find your active waypoint? 50. Thank you. 40, 30, Next is Lagos. So Lagos, 20, we can step down to 6,000 yeah. feet now. 6,000 feet. I'm not worried about descent of this. Thank you, Kadabuki. Okay. Does it sound weird to admit that I've watched each and every single video on your channel? <laughs> Love your content, Captain. Have a nice approach. Very Heart. kind. Hello, Keith. Thank you very much. That's uh, I mean, it's a lot. Uh, I think a lot of people like to spend time watching my videos, which I don't understand why. But uh, very kind of you, Keith. Okay, thank you very much for your, your generous donation. And uh, once again, I hope your bike is keeping you well. <laughs> thank you. Right, post cruise checks now. Fuel, uh, we've got plenty. Alternate is Jurek. We need two tons. We've got three. So we've got about 20 minutes holding. Lights, pressurization is all good. Uh, yeah, diff's already uh, zero. Cabin altitude. Right. Pretty much fully depressurized set. Uh, seat belts are on. That should be on already. I hope that doesn't punish me. Uh, oh no, they were already on. There we are. Checks complete. Good. So we're going to go down to 6,000. 6,000 at Lagos. There's my Vina. That says to get that that restriction just 500 feet per minute. Uh, so we can just. Uh, I like IS hold because it, it's so. If you want to fly the speed accurately, it's one less thing to think about. It will just hold the speed nicely, and then your rate of climb and rate of descent, you just hold you control with thrust. Is it like uh, Constance? That's it. Do you mean to on instead of ah? Yeah, I always forget. I always for, I always think it says standby on. Thank you. And the airport should be down here somewhere. Right. What's, what do you think is going to happen then when we get to the hold? 
Six thousand is the minimum altitude. We're going to we cross three countries in this entire bit as well. Look, Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. <laughs> it's right on the border. Probably Liechtenstein's not far away either. Very nice scenery. Landing performance we've discussed, as I said, yeah, it's going to be <coughs> flat 33. Um, 118 knots. Nice shallow rate of descent, nice CDA. This shows the aircraft, doesn't it? There we go. MSA in this sector is 5,500. I'll start slowing down to. Uh, we'll probably hold. What's the VFTO speed? Probably. We'll, we'll slow down to 200 knots for the hold. When we get to Lagos, um, next is Sit or the Arrival, uh, we'll, we'll start bringing the speed back. Six miles to run from there. About one nautical mile to lose 10 knots. Again, descent management, this is not an issue. It's getting a bit dark in here, isn't it? Live time, live weather. Perfect. Many light switches on this aircraft, they're everywhere. Five miles to run. Remember that's DME. Ah, sorry, let's not get confused. There's the airport. That's DME based off the threshold here. So the actual hold is it's not an nav based hold, Sitor. It's not based off any DME distance. Perfect. Glide slips come alive. I guess the mod I hope the glide slips modelled at uh, four degrees as well. One quick thing, look at the chart. Look, we'll probably be doing 130 knots. So look at the rate of descent required at 4 degrees. Nearly nearly uh, 900 feet per minute, around 900 feet per minute. So there's Lagos. Now I'm about to sit off, so we can step down to 5,000 feet. And that's the platform altitude. And now we're going to start slowing down. So I'm going to go deselect airspeed hold. Pitch mode's engaged. Just going to start pitching up. Just to do... Oh yeah, we're already pretty much level now anyway. So just reduce thrust. So I'm going to fly this procedure at 200 knots. Gust there. And we're approaching Amaris then Sitor. So... Uh, oh, is it, it's, has it skipped out Amaris? Ah, uh, complicated. Where's the next button? Oh, it's about to Amaris now. So Amaris then sit all to hold. Let's see what happens. With it's slash direct parallel entry. Maybe it, it has changed. It just hasn't changed the display. Yeah, Joseph, four degrees, no problem with the speed breakout. Absolutely. Let's reduce a bit more speed thrust there just to get to 200 knots. I'm really curious to see what it does. Hopefully enter the hole correctly. Oh, I can't believe how nice the weather is today for today's stream. It's perfect. It's cap okay everywhere in the Alps. Very nice. Cool. So there's the right turn to Sitor. So let's see what happens when it gets to Sitor. I think the wings are going to fall off. Two miles to run. Be curious. Let's see what happens. Because it thinks it's doing a direct entry according to the FMC. Right, hold. It's engaged. Let's see what it does. Okay, it's turning right, so maybe it's doing an offset entry. It's doing right. Ooh, we'll have to go onto a heading here, guys. I think it's... No, it's not doing an offset entry, it's just turning right. <laughs> so what did we say? 307. Let's see if it rolls out in 307. Might just have to go heading select and do it manually. Ooh, 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 ooh. No, it's rolled through. <laughs> it's broken. Right, so heading select. Oh, no, it's not. Look, it's doing it. it, it oh, oh, look, it's doing it. It's doing it. It's doing an offset entry. It's a very sharp entry. 277 is the inbound course. So it should be on 307. It's rolled on 337. So it's on a 60 degree turn. 30 degrees, correct? 30 degrees. <laughs> Let's just see what it does. It's sort of doing something. 
it's a very, very sharp offset. It's so sharp, in fact. I don't trust it. And I'm going to go on to heading. Heading selects. Let's do it manually, guys. So, yeah, it's almost started time. We're 30 seconds. We're approaching 5,000 feet, the platform altitude, so this is looking good. I'm in pitch hold mode as well, so I'm just going to trim nose down one more dink. Uh, I'll go off our nav now, so nav display on, which is good, showing what we want it to do. 5,000 the platform, I don't mind intercepting it a little bit higher. Yeah, it was a little bit sharp, so that's the correct offset entry. 30 degrees off. Right, that's probably approaching a minute now, so what we'll do is I'm going to do a bit of a dog leg base leg. The reason is it was such a sharp turn initially in error. I think I need to do a bit of a base leg, fortunately, because it's just ILS. It's not going to point directly to the airfield. I'm approaching the platform altitude of 5,000 feet, so it will look good. Oh, speed's running away a little bit here. Let's reduce a bit of thrust here. I don't mind levelling off at 5,000 if we're on the extended centre line. So it is going to level off at 5,000. Oops, ah, my heading. Come on. Why is it not turning? Come on. Why is it only banking 15 degrees? I want 25 degrees. Come on, heading. Why is it only banking 50? Is there an angular bank selector in the aircraft? It's not... There it goes. What happened there? It just went a bit... No, just... That's 30 degrees now, thank you. I'm going to have to go straight on to the intercept heading now. It sort of just banked 15 degrees on its own. There we are. Right. Arming Vorlock. Localizer armed. And we're at 5,000 feet, so let's add a bit of thrust to maintain 200 knots. And we're 15 miles out. There we are. So we've we've flown the procedure arrival into Sitl. It was safe. Just FMC didn't do a good job of it. But and I'm just using manual thrust now to maintain 200 knots, which is here. Localizer captured. Okay, runway heading is set. Wait for glide slope alive, which shouldn't happen. Should happen very soon. And I'll start reducing to 180 knots now. So again, the flaps it should tell me to command the flaps automatically, I think, when you get below certain speeds. Sitor is glide slope capture. Yeah, it still thinks I'm holding here, so let's just go direct to next page. Fuck should do anything, that's fine, just to, otherwise it's gonna get confused. Enter. There we are. So just reducing a bit more thrust. Maintaining the platform altitude so it's all safe. Should say VFTO speed, shouldn't it? Select flat one. Actually, I forget, I'm thinking 737. I think the up speed's quite, quite slow in this, isn't it? Just want to start getting flaps out before glide slope capture. Remember, this is a four degree ILS. 5,000 feet sit or 8.7 DME. So, 8.7, we should be intercepting the glide slope. Perfect. Start rattling off the landing checklist. The lights are on. Glide uh, slope's alive. Checks up. Arm glide slope. Glide slope armed. Glide slope captured. So, missed approach attitude. Established on the ILS. Perfect, I'm going to go flaps now. And we could just use the speed brake to maintain speed. Right, where, what's the misapproach attitude? It is, climb straight ahead, 1.3, 1700 left turn, max 160 to 5000 feet, which is already set. Right, again, just use the speed brake. Control the speed. <laughs> it's great. So I've bugged my speed, so minimum approach speed. Uh, I want to go to flap. 24 now, so 180 knots max. I'm doing 160. Look at the, look at this. Just got the speed brake out just to manage the speed. It's great. Four degrees. The pitch will look unusual. Yeah. Do I have to flip the chart for the speeds to update? Oh, is that gear? Okay. Sorry. There we are. 
Butter or bust. Don't think I need that anymore. Flat 30. And next is flat 33. I'm quite far out still. So I'm just going to maintain this flap and speed setting. Add a bit of thrust here. Perfect. Yep, yeah, click chart to update the bugs. All done. All done. No, no, the speed's actually running away, so 140. Right, let me just run the landing checklist in this aircraft. So, pressure landing lights are on, courses are set, flaps AC pump to auto. Uh, APU air is on. It's not like on the 737. Engine air off. Brakes yellow. Final approach gear flap speed set. After landing, that's it. Done. I think that's normal. Oh, come on. I've noticed. It's, look at this. It's not doing a good job flying the glide slope. Look at that. Come on, plane. I'm I'm two dots high and four whites. It, it did this last stream. It's not doing a good job flying the glide slope. I'll wait until we're one dot high, but I'm going to have to take control soon. It's, look, glide slope is active. I'm on speed. I'm on thrust. I've got the speed brake out now as well. And I'll use thrust to maintain a control speed. I think that's one of the ways they did it. Right, it's coming back now. Well done, played. One dot. So that's it. I'm right in thinking that's the way they did it. They kept that out for the entire approach. Speed. I'll get rid of a speed brake. <laughs> I'm disconnecting now. Disconnected. Perfect. My aircraft. So speed brake is out. A little bit high. I don't think the pappies are good, though. I'm on perfectly on the glide, but I see four whites. I think Microsoft Flight Sim have the Pappy set to three degrees. So even though, look, look at the glide slip. Glide slip indicator is now one dot low. I'm seeing four whites. That's not good. Continue. Now, yeah, it's a Pappy. Pappies are set to three degrees. Yeah. Well, what can I do? Four whites. Come on. Yeah. What's the point of putting the Pappies at three degrees on a four degree apart approach? The Pappies should be set to four. Unless they're not, and I'm just talking gibberish a bit high on speed. That's a shame. Anyway, speed brakes out. 15, no, it's 14, not. It's that. Round idle. Oh, no reverses. Little bounce. Minus 200 feet per minute. Uh, perfect. Those caught the keeps wanting to come up. Well, I better break here, hadn't I? Ah, oh, here we are. Oh, what a shame about the pappies. 60 oh, oh my god. Oh, sorry guys. <laughs> oh, the checklist was open. Why was it open there? In yoke camp for? God damn it. Oh, oh sorry guys. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, is there a taxi way here? No, it's too narrow. I'm going to backtrack. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, Altenheim. Did you study the landing checklist carefully? <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, okay. Aircraft did a nice job. It got a bit high on the glide slip on its own. The pappies, let me just check the chart. Make sure they actually are set to four degrees. It could be that they are set to three degrees. Some airports, believe it or not, have a higher descent path, but the pappies are set to three. Um, where on... On Jefferson charts, do you see the Pappy angle? Uh, taxi. Nice 30 meter wide runway as well. Pappies. Pappies. Point two. Four degrees. So, this, this is annoying because this is a premium airport. This is a high quality airport, you know, with a with a, a steep descent path, but they've set the Pappies to three degrees, the default setting. You have the pappies at four degrees look 2.2 pappies pappies four degrees angle should be at four degrees so if you follow the glide slope guess what's going to happen you're going to see four whites all right so it was stabilized as per the approach the pappies were wrong so you just have to ignore them unfortunately let's hope they update that in a fix yeah i am so sorry the checklists uh, i wasn't looking at chat because my workload was high and when i went to yoke cam unfortunately look if i bring up a checklist if i go change scene you can't see it. So if I change the oh look, there there is there is the checklist. Stupid streamlabs. 
I need a professional editor whilst I'm streaming. <laughs> there we go. Oh, we're down. Anyway, I'm so sorry that uh, y you missed that. <laughs> Let's take Alpha. Anyway, that's such a shame about the puppies. Right. Nice flight, though. Nice flight. Lovely approach. Very scenic. Right, GSX, you do your thing. Let's take one of the three stands. Let's go for ramp one. No. Let's use Swiss GSX, you choose. Stand one is in here, look. Yeah, so this is the SimWorld Update 6 scenery this airport was included, which is why I uh, wanted to fly here. I don't know if this is the correct way in. I'm going to put the flaps up. Oh, that's a... How do I get up to that stand? That's a tight turn, isn't it? Oh, I'm going to hit the air stairs. Oh, well, never mind. I need to get the AP up and running as well. Oh, this is going to be tight. Ignore the stairs. I need a co-pilot, yeah. Uh, Jim, why didn't you tell me the charts are in my face? <laughs> I've got to, oh, two marshes for the price of one. It's one training then. Well, the first one's not doing a very good job. God, this is very tight. Right, I'm going to try and judge this. Ugh, there we go. I don't know this plane's length dimensions. A bit too early. I'm going to be hitting vehicles. And <laughs> oh, I've got, I've got just flight playing stuff in the background as well. Alright, that, that's looking okay. That'll, that'll do. <laughs> right, parking brake set. Oh dear. Um, flipping heck. Well, it's nowhere near the stand markings. I've got one marshaller there. I've got one right there. <laughs> Very short. Uh, let me just finish the cleanup flow because we're going to be doing a second sector. Uh, cool. So, after landing checklist, solar throttle not installed, air brakes and lift spoilers are in the in position, flaps are up, APU is started, APU air is already on. Yeah, why you turn that on during the pre flight, I don't know, but it's done already. Uh, engine air can come off, uh, taxi lights now off as we're on stand, strobe lights can come off, uh, which is up here, and uh, master warning system pull. Okay, that's it. Power off the TMS. Hydraulic pumps off. You do this before you shut the engines down. And uh, Gen 1 and 4 off. Just make sure I've got the APU generator in the on position first, though. Yeah, that's fine to trick the engines. Uh, sorry, the G uh, IDGs. Where's the engine generators? 1, 2 off. Uh, thrust levers to fuel cutoff. 1, 2, 3, 4. <laughs> Uh, fast uh, that music. Fast belts off. Uh, fuel pumps left in or on. Heaters off. Ice detection system off. Ooh, I think it might have been off the whole flight. Yes. Uh, there we are. And then they have the shutdown checklist. So it's all done. Beacon light can come off as well. Cool. There we are. Closed flight. So GSX is going to do its thing. Uh, I need to offload passengers. No replay for the... I want to do two sectors. Never do replay on the first sector. Uh, and request the boarding. boarding requested. I, I've got a GSX profile for this airport as well. Uh, so hopefully it should do its thing. Uh, Jonathan Wiltshire, you misread the checklist. It said off. Um, <laughs> yes. uh, I don't know which one it was. Right, I'd probably... Let's see how we did on New Sky. Um, probably got not full marks. Let's have a look here. New Sky for you. New Sky. Oh yeah, 10 out of 10. Doesn't... Oh, puff. It's all good. Use less fuel look. Uh, great touchdown. 243 per minute. Distance of the threshold was good. Good sense line deviation. 1 metre. Maximus 2. Yeah, another perfect flight. And not the I best hold. Yeah, I think the holding function for direct entry would have worked fine. It definitely didn't like doing... The, the offset entry. It sort of tried doing something. It turned 60 degrees right and then I started using heading and it started going all sort of all over the place really. So anyway, flight directors are off. I'll reset this in the intermission. Uh, what's the time? It's uh, 18 minutes past. I'm going to take a 10 minute break guys. We'll be back at uh, half five for the second sector to Chambly. I hope you're enjoying the uh, stream so far. Don't forget to like and uh, subscribe to Step to Take with this wonderful content. Uh, 
I do, I do enjoy the challenge of flying different aircraft. But uh, anyway, there's the there's GSX doing its offloading, and uh, I'll throw you to the B roll. Oh, the lights are still on. The lights are still on. Uh, there we are. Um, I'll let GSX do its thing in the background, and then I'll get it all loaded for the next sector to Sean Green. See you guys in about uh, ten minutes. Cheers.
Hello again. Thank you very much for that intermission. I brought someone with me. <laughs> Look who it is! Yes, I'd like to board crew, thank you. Jim and I, uh, Jim and I have just got to go stretch our legs. And there we are in the Swiss port uh, truck. And uh, Jack has made an appearance. He's just appeared here, and you can only see the top of head. Jack! <laughs> Hiya! Good boy. Oh, you can hear that tail wagging, can't you? Hmm? Mm hmm? Boy! Perfect. I mean, if we, oh my god, look at the crazy baggage people. Uh, but yeah, uh, I've not done anything to the plane. I've um, just simply relogged onto VATSIM, uh, filed a flight plan, um, reloaded GSX. And there's Jim and I coming on for our last sector in Chambry. We're going to spend uh, Sunday together in the Alps. Uh, well, we can't go skiing because it's so hot. Uh, everything's melted, so uh, yeah. Um, Perfect, I'll get your cam set up again. Uh, and yeah, we're all ready for our next uh, sector to uh, Chambry. Why have we got a pushback tug? I don't know. Where's he going to push me to? <laughs> I'm curious to use it, but I think we could just start the engines and taxi out. I might just turn off GSX when <laughs> we push back. Um, anyway, let's jump on into the... Uh, the cockpit and the boarding is uh, going to start any second. So I'm sort of, uh, you know, going to start the checklist um, from sort of just before the FMS load up because I think it's all pretty much configured uh, ready for, for engine start. Um, the shutdown checklist was just the normal generators off, hydraulics off and fuel pumps off. The rest is all pretty much configured. Uh, I only have one pocket pack on actually for the um, APU but the rest is all, all set. So we'll get the FMC loaded, do the performance and uh, then we'll get uh, everything set up here. Again there's a lot of good knowledgeable people here about the 146 so if you see I've forgotten something really obvious uh, please let me know. Um, right so I'll just reset this FMC it said in the manual look if you want to clear the route just turn it off and on again which should do. I do apologize for having the outdated database it doesn't seem to be a big issue today. Um, we'll get that all loaded in. Uh, Navigraph will fire up. The SID's really interesting as well. We're going to do some immediate turns, maximum speeds. We're going to use a flap 33 takeoff as well, maximum flap setting. Um, I think, is flap 33 a takeoff flap setting? We'll have to have a look. Uh, but let's have a look at the uh, routing first. So, if you see a brief operational flight plan. Now, first things first, it's pretty much the same fuel weights as last sector. We're going to only cruise at 25,000 feet this time. So, 4-2. So let's let's take standard of fuel. Look, there's no events today. We're going to do a straight in approach. So four two, I'll press this aircraft. Passengers boarding starting. How do I sync this with sim brief? Isn't it? Because uh, it didn't automatically last time. No, that's failures. I don't know if there's a way of resyncing. Uh, refresh maybe. I did that already. Yeah. It, last time it said, do you want to sync? Oh my god, it's the boarding entry from Jet Flight. So, yeah, let's go 4.2. So, that's going to be 2.2 uh, two aside. Oh, sorry, 4,100 aside. Uh, so, 4,100. Enter. Ah, what's happened there? 3,705. No, 4,100. Uh, no, I did that wrong, didn't I? My, my fault. 2,100. See it hunker down on its gear. There we are. Has that sorted the gross weight out and the, the trim? I hope so. And the zero fuel is quite cool. It, it's it's uh, synced with sim, uh, GSX, so it's as soon as the passengers board, it increases the um, the zero fuel weight as well. So it's 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 instantaneous. I think it's the only add-on I've seen do that, which is really cool. So as the passengers come up, the weight constantly changes in the aircraft as well. Uh, yeah, sorry, I put the, tried to put all the fuel in one wing, didn't I? So 2,100 aside. There we are, 2,000 monitor aside, fuel's done. Right, uh, yeah, we'll accept that database. So, flight plan. We are now departing from uh, Alton Rhein, Lima Sierra Zula Romeo. Enter, accept. Uh, menu, departure. It's going to be the uh, Trazadinger 3 Lima off runway 10. Enter. Next page. There it is, number 10. Enter. Back to flight plan. Oh no, back to nav maybe. Then flight plan. There we go. So the SID's in from Transadinga. We're going to route off the airway Zulu 69. So that I need to select menu. No, it's list. Ah. 
Flight plan list. Airway. Uh, Lima. Zulu 69, sorry. Uh oh. I hope there's another page. Yeah, number 12. Zulu 69. That's going to be to Alban, number 4. Enter. Perfect. Back to list from Alban. We're going to take November 869. Alban, November 869 is number one. Enter. Alban, we're going to take to Nemos. Oh god, how many pages? Oh, eight pages? It's a long airway, isn't it? Right, guys, ice peel, because it doesn't seem to be alphabetical. Nemos. November 869 to Nemos. No. No. <laughs> you can't. Good news is you can sync your Simbri flight plan loader up if you want. You don't have to do it manually every time like I do. Oh my days. I didn't know numbers went so high. Where? Oh, of course, on the last page. 90. <laughs> Flipping egg. Right, after Nemos, Yankee 5 Flipping egg. Number 2. Uh. After that, oh, that's more like it. Salev, number four. Thanks. <laughs> From Salev, it's going to be the Salev one. Papa, so we'll put in Chambery, Lima Fox, uh, Lima Bravo. Enter. Accept. Menu. Arrivals. I'm getting good with this. Uh, one eight. Runway one eight straight in. Uh, a Salev one. Papa, number eight. Enter. Approach will be, ooh, Alice Yankee or Zulu. I'll have a little look on uh, the charts here quickly. Uh, where are we coming in from? Salep 1 Papa. Let me just have a look at this arrival. Oh, crikey. Oh, it loops round. Kenzo, Govna, Pirov. So I want an ILS chart with Pirov on it. Pirov here, so we'll do ILS Zulu, number two. Pier of transition number one. Wonderful. Right, I think we've got it all in. Let's just have a quick look for any discontinuities or duplicated routes. So, flight plan, uh, nav, no, back to flight plan. Uh, looks all good here. Tinox, transiting her, Nemos, number 90, overhead Geneva, right over the top of Lake Geneva. Pier of. Okay, looks okay. We'll, we'll check that routing on the SID and star on, on the uh, inbound there. Right, so FMC's loaded, fuel data's all in, it's already preloaded, 4.2 tonnes of fuel, and the basic weights are autom automatically transferred across, and the routing information is in. 226 is a gross error check, let's just check the distance on the route. Ground distance, 274. Okay, is that as the crow flies then? <laughs> It'll be fine, be fine. <laughs> Maybe it says the crow flies overhead. Perfect. Right, FMC's loaded. Right, performance. This will be the shortest runway I've ever taken off on uh, in the um, in the 146. So let's just go over here to the TMS system again. So power. I've already tested it once today. Uh, temperature's 26 degrees. So takeoff 92.1. So for takeoff, yeah, flap 30. Is the, is the lowest, you can't use 33. So we're going to use flap 30 for departure. Look at the V-speed, so low. So flap 30, 92.1, and uh, 109 and 116. So slow, but it needs to be because because we've got such a short runway here. Um, so that's set. Flap 30 for takeoff. Remind me in case I select flap 18. Um, TMS is all done. Seatbelt signs we can turn on now because fueling is complete. Oh, that's that one. And T M S bugs are set. We can turn that back off for the engine starts. Nav radios are all set for departure as well. We'll leave it on runway heading and the ILS. It's an R nav SID. Uh, there's no ATC. And for engine start, we just check the AC pump is on, uh, which it is. Beacon lights we can turn on. Uh, APU air on. Uh, fuel pumps one to four on. And then we uh, have the APU air off. 
There we go. So yeah, I know I've got the beacon light on here, just to brief the Sid and Taxis. Taxis pretty much straightforward here. Um, it's going to be, you know, I'm not going to use the pushback feature. I'm just going to make a right turn alpha. I am going to backtrack because I need all of this runway available. 1455. It's not super sure, but I don't have any performance data, so I want to use every run bit of runway. And the Sid, let's just check the routing's good. So we're going to climb straight ahead to 1800 feet, 1800 feet which is coded, left turn to Zulu Romeo 501 at about 5000 feet, maximum 180 for us, maximum 160, interesting. So minimum climb gradient for us now is, what are we doing, the 3 Lima, 6.5%. So let's say we're doing this at uh, 150. We need to be a thousand feet per minute. Okay, so we just need to go away. Maybe we maybe have to go up at, from flap 30 to whatever the intermediate flap setting is above 30. What is it? 24. Hold at flap 24 then for that initial turn. We'll do NADP1, and then when we're inbound above that height, we'll accelerate. Inibi Tinox Transitinger, and we'll put Transitinger 14.3 on Jim's side. Cool. I think we're good. Let's try not hit any mountains. I uh, hope you're doing well in chat as well. Thanks for staying with me whilst I get the aircraft all set up. Feel free to ask questions, but uh, the 146 is uh, pretty self-explanatory. It's difficult as well. Oh, Steve, thank you. Flap 18 will give the highest takeoff speed for best climb performance, whereas flap 30 will get your front wing quicker but impair your climb. The short field takeoff will require higher settings. Yeah, let's let's g tell you what. Let's go in between then. Let's do flap 24. Set these bugs, okay? So. There we are, flat 24. It's a nice compromise between making sure I don't go off the end of the runway and okay-ish climb performance. <laughs> okay, flat 24. Right, start the engine. So I'm just going to tell GSX, I mean, push back. How do, how do you just do engine start on stand with GSX? I don't wish to push back, but there is the person with the, the tow bar. Maybe I'll just do a mini, I'll do a little push back for them. I'll start the engines now as well. Start master on, starting engine number four. Start. Uh, oh no, I'm not. Hello, Captain, we are ready for pushback. Oh, I've got to. Oh, I forgot to start my new sky flight. Ah! Right, hold on. Just gonna stop the engine. Yeah, turn off the anti kitchen light off. Just start. I've got, I've got to log the flight, guys. I need the points. I need the points on you, Sky. <laughs> Too many things to do as a pro streamer these days. Departure checks completed. Right, by flight flights. I'll just put the departure ten minutes from now. Uh, Alpaca two bike foxtrot. Oh, damn it! Two, two bike foxtrot. Uh, Lima Sierra Zulu Romeo to Lima foxtrot Lima Bravo. In a six, is it four six three? Yeah, G Lizzie. That's the Alpaca Airways fleet. Uh, back to Tabada Parashas. I'll get the zero fuel weight to be at least match. The so zero fuel weight is 35.1. Oh no, that's the max. Oh no, it is 35.1. Well, I can't do any higher than that. Fine. Uh, departure time is 16. I'm going to have to set 1645. Uh, 1655. I think that's the latest it will let me. Or at least it will let me do it. Book flight. Flight added. Start flight. Yay! I did a thing. Alright, new sky flight has started. Points mean prices. <laughs> right. Nose right. Oh, standby. Right. Anti collision light on. Uh oh, what's that noise? Start the engine again. I hope I haven't broken it. Uh, let's, let's just do a straight pull pushback. I want. Oh, I don't know how this is going to work, but I want the, no the tail going left, nose right. Release parking brakes, please. This will be interesting. Commencing push. Right. All engines clear. Thank Start you. At will. Sounds Swiss, right? This is going to be the shortest pushback in history. I do have a GSX profile, so um, it's um, oh my, it's abandoned, abandoned. <laughs> <laughs> Stop here. Oh, actually, hold on. Hold on. Okay, I take it back. It's only just going to snap the nose of it off. Oh, my days. Just threw all the ground equipment, you know. Okay, I'll leave it. I'll leave it. Right. Uh, starting engine number three. 
It's doing its thing, it's doing its thing. What a lovely evening here in the Alps. Then two. And one oil pressure, all the gauges are up here. Please set parking brakes. Ah, perfect. Waiting your confirmation for a good engine start. Oh, you're going to be all day, so... Cockpit you know. to ground. We have a good engine start. You can disconnect. Unlocking gear. The various noises of aircraft destruction. Oh! <laughs> what was that? That made me jump! <laughs> I thought there was someone, someone dropped in the door. What was that? I think it was GSX doing its thing, wasn't it? That scared the bejeebas out of me. Did you hear that? <laughs> of course you heard it. That made me jump, and I probably made you jump with my reaction. What was that? <laughs> that was, that was, oh, distracted. Right, starting engine number two. <laughs> that really made me jump. Right. I've got nav one active. I don't know, I want our nav anyway. Is that doing its thing? Tow truck disconnected. Bypass. No, why remote. is it showing that direction for a wait? No, I don't like it. 166 miles! For the next waypoint, that's not a good sign. Oh. What's the next active waypoint? Direct to. Mm, it's, sho it's showing like. Well, oh, where's the purple? Why is it showing Salev, direct to Salev, as the active waypoint? That's why... It's a good job I spotted this. So what on earth's happened here? Salev is the active waypoint, waypoint number 14. And that's 166 miles away. Why has it done that? What we're going to do is just route direct to the altitude. I cleared the FMC. Hmm, that sounds a bit buggy. It's a good job I checked that. I just saw this distance, 166 miles. Uh, sorry, I'm not concentrating now, am I? Ah, uh, I'm stuck. <laughs> that person's still showing, still pushing me back, still attacks me on the stand. Right, Jessica's is gone. Right, yeah, I think there's a bit of a bug there. Right, so what I'm going to try and do is just direct to the first waypoint, number two. Hopefully that will... See what happens when I enter. Hopefully this will change. Yeah, there we go. I fixed it. I did a thing. Let's hope it's not broken it. Be, be vigilant on multiple sectors then, guys. Because the it, it just did a a random route direct. If I followed that after departure, I would have been in trouble. With all this high terrain around. You've got to be really vigilant with, with these things. Right. Two good engine starts by the looks of it. Perfect. So, start selector, uh, it can come to off, start master off, <laughs> excuse me, uh, engine anti ice not required, uh, gen 1 and 4 on, mm, which is, where are you, uh, APU air on, packs 1 and 2 on, brake fans still in auto, uh, engine 2 and 3 hydraulics on, uh, AC pump on, a PTU on. It's just backup, isn't it? The heaters on. Uh, power TMS. And transponder to uh, TA. Perfect. Uh, after start checklist and flaps, we're going to go for 24. Oops, I've had the re Look, I've been on. Unicom all day, but I've not actually had the radio on. Mm. Uh, cool. Uh, flap set, taxi lights next, do the config check. Let's release the parking brake for this. Config check. Good. And we'll just slowly taxi forward. Um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something. Oh, yeah, reset master warning. There we are. I think that's just resetting it. There we are. And we'll move forward. Yeah, what I found is some add ons multiple sectors. If you do a second sector, it, it sort of sometimes can throw things a bit skew with. So obviously the FMC there, for some unknown reason, it decided to route direct to like a, a waypoint halfway on my route, but just updating it direct to the first waypoint after departure seemed to, to work well. 
The old, is it a bug with the sim or on the actual FMC? Never know with the UNS. Yeah, is UNS a bit unreliable then? Oh, there's no one around anyway. Beautiful scenery here. Alton Hein, again, this is a free airport. Uh, sim World Update 6. Oh, yeah, that's the whole point for the runway. So we'll just get there, hold, and we'll do the before takeoff checklist. Just update the MCP altitude. I just want to see what the sit stop altitude was. I think it was 5,000 still. uploaded the fuel, didn't we? Yeah, 4-2. Right, cool. Parking brake is set. So, uh, taxi checklist. We've done the config check. Continuous ignition is not required. Cabin call press. There we are. Lights on up here. Strobes can come on. Uh, TMS is already up. Flight controls. I didn't test those on the first sector. I think because I've stopped. Yeah, you see I've stopped on the turn. The nose wheel isn't quite straight. So, that's something to bear in mind. Be careful with, so flight controls. There we are, free and... Uh, full and free movement, no restrictions, rudder pedals, I'll check the are jammed on the tiller anyway. Um, master warning system verified is good. Uh, go around mode is... Why is that... Why is that not giving me GA? Flight directors are off, that's fine. Same as the real, uh, same as the 737. <laughs> GA. There we are. Go around mode engaged. Our nav is armed as well. Cool. Oh, what have I done there? What clicks? What was that? Perfect. Um, perfect. We can line up now. I'll just put a unicorn. Uh, where is my volume? There we go. And Alton Ryan traffic. Our bucket two Mike Foxtrot taking off. Uh, Runway 10 and the Transdinger 3 Lima. Perfect, right, so I think we're all good. So I'll enter the runway now, backtrack. I have no performance data for the 146. We're going to try flat 24 <laughs> on this 1400 meter runway, see what happens. Uh, I think, let's see if backtracking was worth it. We're going to go all the way back here, use every inch of this runway because it is not long. Flat 24, you can see they're extended quite a way. Wonderful add-on. Yeah, uh, Bjorn, you're probably quite right with the UNS. It might actually just work like that in real life. I heard the UNS is a bit sort of funky. Just got to be quite vigilant, but we're quite happy. We've got the correct active waypoint, which is actually a conditional height uh, on the Transendinger, Transendinger 3 lever. So 1,800 feet. It's only 500 feet above the ground. We have to start that immediate left turn. Remember, maximum speed is going to be 160 knots. And the sit stop altitude is 5,000 feet. Now, you know what? So I keep climbing and don't bust the gradients. I'm going to go straight up to my cruise level. There's no ATC, guys, so 250 is set. Perfect. Reset this clock. Still been ticking now. Oops, good job I looked up. It's about to go and hit the barrier. Only 30 metre wide. I'm going to turn around a 7.3 on a 30 metre wide runway, but you can do it. There's certainly no problem in the 146. There we are. Perfect. There we are. Alrighty, I think we've got everything good here. No one in chat yelling at me. You forgot this, you forgot that. Uh, I've got enough fuel. I've got the routing updated. Uh, let's go to Chambry in France. Right, start the timer. That's really sensitive. Right, go. I just reset the cameras. Perfect. Toes of chat. Let's go. I'm just, I'm just gonna hold on the brakes, which is my right trigger. So I'm gonna have to use my left hand here. It's stabilized. No, not not saying anything. Right, that'll do. Set takeoff thrust. No, oh, he's he's not saying much, Jim. Now. There we are, set about 92, peak TGT 880, there we are. Speed alive, both sides. Ah, uh, he's woken up now, checked. Uh, I, knots, I need to accelerate quicker. <laughs> <laughs> More acceleration, please. V1, rotate. <laughs> Good job, I used flap 24. Why is nothing happening? Oh my god. Tell strike, tell strike, be careful. Gosh, snapped up there. Get 
cheer up. Right. Oh, crikey. So I'm going to go up one notch of flops. Gen Remember, 160 knots maximum. So let's bug 160 knots. There's 1800 feet. Left turn. Bug 160. Ignoring the flight rate and roll. I don't mind keeping the speed back actually, it's going to be a good rate of climb, but I do want to do 160 and go up a natural flop. V2 plus 10, safe high speed, select a flat. Bang angle, bang Oops, angle. yeah, that's my fault. Watch 35 degrees there. So 160, there we are, so I'm going to pitch up now. Oh, that's great, great of climb, yeah. We need to do a minimum of 1,000 feet per minute, we're doing 2,000. Great, so we're just going to pitch for 160. Our flight director in indicated airspeed hold, so it's giving me some pitch guidance. I go L nav. Yeah, it's giving me roll guidance, it wants me to fly left a bit more. Good, so maximum 160. I'm on track now, so let's fly right. Where's the flight director commanding me a left turn still? So again, I've got to keep this. I've got to keep this flap setting. Remember, it's maximum 160. I don't want to get too slow, so I'll just get trimmed out for 160 knots. And I think once I get to Zulu Romeo 501, which is in four and a half miles, you can see the DME here. Uh, we can clean up. So again, I'm just going to maintain 160. Let me just get the charts up there. This is what it looks like. Look. Probably should have done a bit more of a wider turn. Yeah, whoops. Max bank of 20 degrees. I went a bit too much there. But yeah, it's trimmed nicely for 160. Flight director's giving me what I want. But yeah, keep your bank angles there. What's the maximum flap extension speed? Yeah, I think that... Oh, yeah, I was just looking at your comments. I think that was quite close to tail strike. Yeah, I, I, rotation rate was probably about 5, 6 degrees per second. <laughs> it's way, way too fast. But it, I, I pitched up, nothing happened, then all of a sudden, whee! I was like, oh my gosh, I've released all the back pressure. So I think I got away with it, just... So again, we're still... Probably should get the engine air on. I still haven't done the after take on checklist, I'm too busy flying. As soon as we're at Zulu Romeo 501, which is in one and a half miles, we'll continue the acceleration. better. <laughs> Whoops, just watch my nose. Again, I don't know where the flight director bar is commanding such a steep left turn. There we are. Right, let's bug up now. Let's bug 250. Actually, I wonder if... Oh, yeah, look, my bug speed works. Cool. It's very slow, though, so I'll just bug it manually 250. There we are. Let's lower the nose. We'll just do about 500 feet per minute. Accelerate to 250 knots. We'll track the flaps. We've complied with the climb gradients, we've complied with the speed restriction, max 160. We're professional pilots here. The FTO, safe high speed, select to flap There we are, flaps coming up. There's a lot of, you lose a lot of lift when you go from flap 18, I've noticed this. Look at the, look at the rate of descent change, you have no pitch input. So trim those down. Karen accelerated to 250 knots. Let's do 500 feet per minute. And approaching in Nibby's the next waypoint. A little bit left, two and a half miles. Nay, all looks slightly descending actually, because that, that was that big loss of lift there. Let's just reduce thrust now to 90. Now approaching 250 knots. Oh, it's already commanding the left turn to the next waypoint. So we'll make that left turn as well. Just going to get ready to hold pitch, pitch hold. Oh, I'm sorry, indicated airspeed hold. Still commanding the old speed. Oh, what's that yellow for me? I'm not sure. So just level there for a second. There's 250, so IS holds. There we go. So now I can follow the flight directors. 250 knots, they'll command. I'm making a left turn to Tinox. It's the next waypoint. There you go. Flew that quite nicely. Climb grade's been achieved. Wonderful. Flies very nicely. 
Fly Doctor is very sensitive to roll. Yeah, as well. Okay, all in trim. Commands. There we go. Now, enjoyed that departure. It was good. Nice to, to fly something a bit different. Max speeds, comply gradient. So the only thing was I banked a bit too steeply. Uh, and then we've complied the speeds for the climb gradient as well. So we're well on track here. Right, after takeoff checklist. Let's fire that off here. And we're going to maintain 250 knots in the climb as well. So, after takeoff checklist, uh, engine 104 is on. I've already done that. APU air off. Sync feature on. Uh, master select one. And we're going to go add about 90%. Thrust there for engine 1 and 2. That's set. AC pump off. Uh, PTU can come off. Release the cabin crew. After takeoff, check is complete. Passing 10,000 feet already, so we can turn off the lights. Fuel. We've got sufficient, just under 4 tons. AP can now come off. Pressurization is all good and set down here. Diffs 3.0, slowly climbing. Now release the belts. Check's complete. Arm out target, thank you very much. And all set standard now as well. Just pass the transition altitude. Cool. Uh oh. Oh, it's that last time, it's the APU. Perfect. Cool. Get transiting active. 14 3. And we're on our way. There we are. Needles are pointing in the right direction. Well, they're not, but we've got DME off it. Cool. Nice. Yeah, great little aeroplane. Very rewarding to fly. Challenging as well. Got to keep your wits about you. No water throttle. It's uh, it is getting from A to B is good fun. Perfect. I think I found one. Yep, thanks for that. All out target. That was a great little reminder. Uh, Demo rise. I finally got to explain using VR with it. I know the Tony 321 is VR compatible, but does anyone know if the 340 is? No idea. I've only just got a VR headset myself. Uh, I bought a, well, my fiance and I we bought a, um, what's it called? A Meta Quest 3 it's an Oculus headset. It's amazing. I couldn't believe how much better VR has gotten in the last few years. It was amazing. We've been playing um, some of the included games, but I bought one. Um, uh, what was it called? Hot something or other. VR Hot. It's like a shooter. Uh, it's like the Matrix. You have to dodge bullets and shoot people and throw, and throw stuff. It's wicked. But I know there's a way of linking it to Steam or certainly my PC, where I've just not sat down and had a play of it yet. Tail strike checked. Yeah, I couldn't believe how quickly it rotated. It started rotating, nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened, and then poof, it just snapped up. I was like, oh. It, it bit up. Yeah, it's a good job I didn't go any lower flap settings than flap 24. I think if I'd stuck with flap 18, it would have been. Well, certainly some twigs in my wheel well bay right now. <laughs> and yeah, flap 30 would have probably been a bit too much drag. We wanted to get it up soon. Super hot, that's it, Bjorn. That's the game I've been playing. Super hot. Really cool. Devil Rise, it runs pretty smooth. Use the Meta Quest for a link cable to the PC, and I'm surprised how well you can uh, read the small writing now. Yeah. Um, so, what, what's a link cable? Is this the, a USB C? Because on the top of my PC, I've got a USB C connector. Or is it something I have to buy uh, for it to work? Very, very exciting. Very good tech. Yeah, there's left turning man transiting her. As I said, lower cruise level, flight level 250, so we're already there nearly. Two sectors in the 146. Don't think I've ever done two sectors in this aircraft. Uh, it's USB C, but they're off. Oh, Finically on cables, it plugs into the side of your headset to USB. Okay, yeah, so I, I've got the included USB-C cable, and I, I 
we bought the um, the official charging hub. It's very expensive, but it, it, it just sits under our TV and it keeps everything fully charged. It's quite nice. So I've got an additional USB-C cable. I, I, yeah, I'll have a play with it in the coming days. Uh, I'm busy tomorrow. I oh, am yeah, on leave at the moment. It's great. Yeah, yeah, I think the cable, I might have to get a third party on, in fact. I'll have a play. Oh, yeah, so, maybe stream tomorrow night, I'll see. We're, we're out all day tomorrow. Um, uh, I'm all, I'm all, I'll be all 146 out after this. <laughs> To the side of the headset too is pretty cool. Yeah, James, that was super hot, super hot. Great game. So still doing 250, actually. It's like less than 250, but not a big problem. So, where are we going today? So, from transiting at Auburn, you know, just north of the Alps. No, Sion. There's Lake Geneva. Yeah, literally right over Lake Geneva, top of Geneva. And this arrival sort of loops around, which will fly, and then into, into Chambry. Oh, yeah, just south of the Alps now. Double Riser bought mine for 20 quid on Amazon. It performs just as good as a 90 pound official link cable. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I like the idea of that. Now, I did see in the MetaQuest shop, it did say there was a Steam Link thing. I guess that's so you could just play the games, but on a screen in VR. Uh, free scratch, have you ever flown into Chambry in real life? I have not. I've never been to Chambry. Very nice. Steve, you heard about the new BMI tracker software? Apparently, it's good, as much easier to set up than Toby. It just needs a webcam. It's really cheap. Thirty dollars. I've never heard of that. Wow. I've heard of some sort of, you know, cheaper ones that work reasonably well using a camera and some software. But no, I've never heard of that one. Oliver, do you fly VFR in your time off? No, I don't. Uh, my SCP rating expired. Oh, yeah. 12 years ago, um, part of me, I was going to say a lot before, part of me would go, oh, you know what, it'd be nice to take out a light aircraft, but I actually flew with um, an FO quite recently, when I'm, I'm, I'm on the training captain course at the moment, and I flew, I was actually in the right-hand seat, so when I say the FO, he was doing his command upgrade course, and he was in the left-hand seat, he flies recreationally in the UK, but he's thinking of giving up, it's A, very expensive, and B, airspace and restrictions, are just just make it very difficult to sort of fly around everywhere, you've got to be quite vigilant. Uh, so he doesn't enjoy it as much so much. Perfect, so no, no uh, schedule holds today, we'll try and do a bit more of a direct arrival, a bit more of a CDA straight in. Yeah, it worked. It worked okay, I just had to take manual control, but it was a shame that the Pappies were misaligned. So that's a good point, actually. What do you what do you reckon the bets are at Chambry, guys? So Chambry, I've got stock scenery. Okay. ILS Zulu 1.8. Look at the descent path here. It might not even have the steep descent. 4.46 degrees. Okay. And the Pappies... Yeah, the pap is at 4.5. So 4.6, 4.5. You might see three whites, but I've got a funny feeling that Stock Chambry ain't got 4.5 degree pappies and is not. Maybe even the ILS is three degrees. I don't know. How much effort do devs go for stock scenery for correct pappies and correct descent angles? In defense to explain, they're usually quite good because everyone's made custom profiles. So I don't know. Seeing that the free the, the the better quality scenery for uh, Alzenrein did not have the correct pappies. I'm not very hopeful. There we 
go, want to go. Ready to climb is a thousand feet per minute. Can't believe how warm it is down there today. At least the RLS was steep into um, mountain right. I like planes as high. Hello. Uh, Oliver, do you think corporate flying is a good career? Um, for me personally, it's not something I'd, I'd want to do, but uh, hey, when I finished flight school, I would have happily taken any job, so um, it's a different lifestyle. Just to get a little bit of thrust off there. Uh, there's one cloud right in front of me. Uh, Steve Schumper is one of my favourite little airports to fly into. Love the approach over the lake. Yeah, it's very nice. I had a look at it when I uh, just checked the airport out. Has anyone here flown into the stock Chambry scenery though? And if they know the pappies and quite buff angles, correct. Free scratch. I think if I lived in the US, I'd be more interested in getting my SCP. The airspace here costs higher, and that's yeah, much cheaper out there than it is here. I mean, what does it now cost? If you if you're a member at a flying school, you don't own a plane. What's the cost wet per hour for a, a one seven two? When I was at our building, it was one hundred and thirty pounds an hour wet for a one a nineteen seventies nineteen eighties one seven two. Didn't have GPS, but it had. Uh, you know, HSI and uh, OBS. You know, basic, but it was, it was great. 130, 135 pound an hour, I think. And that was back in 2008, 2009. Oh, James, very good. Flown into the uh, Chambry Airport, saw no issues, very cool. So I'll just accelerate to decimal 68. And it's already updated, look, 100 miles to the top of descent. For the first restriction at Loop Louvob at below 90. It's actually a previous waypoint that wants us lower. Yeah, leave up 9,000 or below, but we actually... Oh no, that is the first restriction, great. We just need to make sure we're at or below 9, so we're at 210 knots by leave up. Okay, and VNAV should give us that. So routing's going to be Salev. Over the top of the air, VOR, leave up, Kenzo, loop round to Pira to the ILS. See how it behaves. They are decimal 6-8, so we'll sync up TGT. Oops, it's kind of shooting up there. Said about 640, that worked out quite well last time. For cruise. Perfect, so TGT should be synced. There's no master on this one. There we go. Keep an eye on the speed. Slowing down. It is, so let's go for a bit higher. T yeah, it worked 600 degrees the other day, it worked nicely. That's all 6A, that's sort of holding the speed quite nicely now. Cool. Vince, uh, here in Austria, it's 170 euros for a DA22 seater analog gauges. Okay, that's actually not too bad. Flight schools were higher for about £200 an hour, as low as I've found for a PA38, and you need an hour instructors to sign off. The flying club have no idea about. Yeah, that's, that's pricey. DA40, and a fancy flight school is at 300 an hour. Uh, Care for Gordon says, I need to learn how to fly this plane. I've just bought it, and I don't, and I don't know absolutely nothing. <laughs> right. I've got some advice. Okay. Stand by head over to this website uh, 
and I'll, I'll post it in chat actually, hold on. Flight, the flightsim.to website and start with this checklist, it's great. And follow that and it will get you from flight A to B. But not only that, look at the included checklist that just fly have a tutorial flight so firstly what I'd recommend is do the just flight tutorial flight first following it methodically and then use this checklist which is what I'm using right now to fly from from different places so so let me just bring that up for you here there you go so that's the link I've just sent you oops not responding uh oh uh, it's completely crashed my PDF viewer. Seems okay working. Yeah, that, that's a good start if you want to fly from A to B. Uh, just uh, south of the Alps. Sorry, north of the Alps. Get my geography right. Yeah, my PDF is crashed. Oh, it's come back to life. Oh, I know why it went crashing really slow, because it was linked to my printer. My second printer, which is always slow. There we are. So that's what I'm, I follow during the stream, which is the link in, in the uh, description. Free, free checklist, they're really good. Yeah, that's it, Kefcon. So follow the PDF included by Just Flight, and once you're done, use that checklist to do your own flight from A to B. Uh, also, on top of that, uh, use the... Um, FMS, there's an FMS tutorial as well. Uh, they've got a short flight from somewhere in New Zealand, I think. There you go. So that, that's another tutorial flight purely based on the UNS. And then obviously, yeah, that's the official manual, which I've not used today. But this just like make incredible manuals, very detailed. Is that the toilet just got? Ah, look, look, the PDF appears when I turn up Yoke Cam. Annoying. Let me just stop from doing that. Did you know there is a mod to remove that annoying white bar at the top of the screen? Is there? <laughs> it doesn't bother me that much, to be fair. Cool. Right, I'm just going to have a biscuit, guys, because we have 30 seconds, and then we'll start setting up for shopping. Oh dear, my biscuit. I have to drop. You know, I've just exceeded MMO. So EG TGT was a bit too high. Jim, you just can't trust him. Is that the beginning of Lake Geneva? No, there's no lake. What lake is this? Lake Neuchâtel, and, and then it's Lake Geneva. Yeah, Mont Blanc is well. It's obscured by cloud now. Oh, look at how quickly the speed's going off! Wow, 600 is way too low. Need to find a nice balance here to keep the thrust set where we want. Anyway, let's start setting up for the approach into Chambéry. So let's check the arrival carefully. So starting at Salev. Direct to Pino. No restrictions at Pino. After Pino, direct to Colo. No restrictions at Colo. Overhead the VOR, not part of the arrival. But Luvob is 9,000 or 90 below max 210 knots. So that's all coded for the restriction height restriction. And it's the Kenzo, 275. 276, that's fine. Tracking north to uh, Govna. 6,500 or above, and then to Pirov, 6,500 above. So it loops round, and then we enter a hold at Pirov right and turns if we have any delays. We're not anticipating delays, though, no events. So ILS Zulu 1A, 
Let's check my speed here. Oh yeah, I've got to watch this like a hawk. Just increase the thrust again. I know that will accelerate again. Um, so there's the, the transition via Govna. Govna to Pirov. Pirov 6500. Continuing east to Lima Bravo 403. And then to uh, 5000 feet at India Bravo 18 Zulu. And then that's the platform. And set the final approach tricks at Fox Street India 18 Zulu. That's 8.9 DME. It says 8.7 here. That's fine. Cool. So it looks like the routing's all good. Let's set the frequency courses and minimums. 109.5 for the ILS. Let's keep on the speed here. So 109.5. 109.5. Courses are 175.5. Seven five. Good. Frixie's course is just the minimums. So for this, where are my minimums? C minimums for eleven dash two A. Oh my goodness me! What's the missed approach climb gradients for the uh, one four six? <laughs> cat C. Why not Cat C? or Cat B. Can't can't see. Uh, let me just pin this here. So we're on eleven dash two A. I mean, let's just base it off cat see then. Uh, so two and a half percent is the minimum missed approach climb gradient we use for two engines on the 7.3. I don't know what the minimum is for the 146. I mean, 2.5 is very shallow. I mean, if we went ultra conservative, we fire the final approach speed, uh, which is going to be at 118 knots, we use max flat. So it'll be here. So the minimums are really high. Um, 1250 above the ground, 2019 feet. So what I, I'll do, I don't, I don't think we can set the RA as high as that. No, 980 is the highest. So how do I get it to ignore this? I can't even set a rad out. If I've just set that to zero, let's stop it from going off. There we are. So yeah, remember guys, minimums is off 1250 above the ground. Uh, so 2,000 feet on the on the altimeter. That's going to be minimums. Not an issue today at all. It's a lovely day. Just double check the weather here. Look, it's 1202 Cav OK, 21 degrees. I mean, it's beautiful. You can't get better than that. So, yeah, we'll fly the minimums down, down to. to um, I need to make a note of this, so I'll forget. Let's just base on 2.5. 1250 above the ground. So, minimums are 2019 feet. You can't really set anything on the altimeter. 2019 feet MDA, uh, DA. Cool. So frequency course is minimum set. Event for missed approach. Climb straight ahead at the NDB 346. Crikey. I tune ADF. That's here. How on earth do I select? Alright, I'll leave that on ADF. 346. Leave that on ADF. Alright. Climb straight ahead to Charlie Hotel. And it's a climbing turn. 080260. So left bank, max 160, re rejoin the Charlie Hotel NDB. Continue climb on 355 from the NDB. Over the airport. Lock back course, 6,500 feet. 7 miles from Charlie Yankee. DME is uh, 
co-located with the ILS. Uh, left turn max 210, 277 towards Kenzo. What a complicated missed approach. I've never seen a back course before. You need to set TGT temp on the rollers. Oh, I think you're right. I remember that from last time. 601, 620 is good. I've got it set to 664 and a bit. Oh, that side. It's holding decimal 68 quite nicely, so I'm, I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> right, anyway. They've discussed having high terrain all round. Stick to the procedure arrival. And yeah, landing performance isn't going to be an issue now. It's got 2,000 metres, so it's, it's shortish. There's commercial traffic, airports go, but uh, more than fine for the 146. There we are. We'll land, vacate Sierra. Taxi on stand. Perfect. Just stock scenery, guys, so. There we are. Lake Geneva straight ahead. So, Mont Blanc. Around there and that Matterhorn. Very nice. Anyway, it's top of descent. Oh, 12 miles. Love it when a plan comes together. Harold, your your cat. Oh, sorry, your dog's. <laughs> your dog was called Cat C. Brilliant. Even the 146 got a sugar rush. Yes, I got a <laughs> slide. Slightly fast. I hope we don't get penalised by a new sky for that. Very cool. Nice arrival today. Seven threes often flying there from two in jet two during ski season. Oh cool, I didn't know that. Uh, E190s from City Fire too. Yeah, Chambry, I mean it's, you're straight on the on the into the um, Alps, aren't you? I mean Courchevel and they can't be too far away, can they? Very nice. So descending right over the top of Geneva, Geneva Airport. There is Geneva Airport. We've streamed in and out of there a few times. That's an interesting view. Very GTA, GTA esque. Three miles to top descent, just a shallow 2,000 feet per minute. I forgot you can make your own virtual coffee in this aircraft. Oh. I think it's automatically going on them. Don't think you can do anything else. Uh oh, what's going on in there? Uh oh, what has happened? What has happened? I've lost an engine. What happened there? I've what? Oh my god! Well, I've not. I've not done anything. I have not done anything. Well, at least I got four of them. <laughs> What's happened? Uh, is that okay? I've never actually had an unplanned engine failure before. Well, that was good timing. Look at that. One mile from top of descent. Right. Oh, flip. Uh, is the coffee machine <laughs> pressed brew? I pressed brew and the engine failed. Right. Let's. Well, we, we, look, we're slowing down to two fifty knots. That's fine. Right, well, if I, has to ha if I was to have an engine failure, it would be this aircraft. Has it all got the checklist? <laughs> Try and restart it. Right, all is calm. Uh, let's start descending to a safe level. Uh, and that first level is to be at 9-0 by new form. So, 9-0. Right. Out up. Let's just bring the speed back to 250 knots. Uh, well, I pressed the brew... What's happened there? I pressed the brew button here. And as soon as I pressed brew, the engine failed. <laughs> Maybe if I press that, it'll restart. No. Right. Uh, okay. Engine failure. Uh, so we'll go to IS hold. We'll just reduce thrust now anyway, because we need to do 2,000 feet per minute. And let's see if just flight have a checklist. Let's see if we can get it restarted. It's not like it's a difficult airport, you know, with terrain all around and to trick but the devs put it, yeah, probably. Right, let's see if there's any anything available. Engine failure. Uh, no. Is there not emergency checklists or anything like that? Oh, there's lots of tables here. Right. Oh, Let's turn that annoying music off whilst I deal with this. Uh, I can't find any guidance on the checklist, so let's 
What is it? Engine number three has failed. So let's... Shut it off. Shut off the fuel. Just make sure we're pressurising. Because we've lost the hydraulic system as well, haven't we? But it's definitely fine. I'm not losing pressure. Cabin's called me. Let's turn off the air. And we've lost... Uh, right, let's use a bit of logic here. So let's turn on the PTU, which is going to at least pressurise the other system. Is that rolling uncontrollably, or is it just... Navigating, no, it's fine. So I've turned on the PTU, so I now have pressure both sides. Oh, bit low. Air low pressure, okay. Well, at least I've got hydraulics both sides. Charts up, thanks. Um... Oh yeah, you guys even suggested no fire, no no fire indication. I mean, let's carry on to Chambry. I've got three engines. Uh, why that failed, I have no idea. I'm, I'm curious, but it was it was as soon as I pushed the brew button. I pushed the brew button. Engine failed. I don't dare turn it off. All right, so we take a pan call. You know, pan 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 alpaca two might fox drop. Had an engine failure. Like to continue towards Salev and to send two flood over line zero. Uh, stand by. You brewed the oil. Airlo, don't you need to turn off the engine three pump? Uh, yes, because it's not going to do anything, isn't it? Right, so I've got all the hydraulic systems pressurised with three engines. This one's failed, isn't it? Okay, I, I, f I can't find a checklist to try and get it restarted. I mean, I could try and... Let's see here. It's a start master. Start power. Put it in the normal position. How do I do like a windmill start or a cross between start or something like that? Let's try it. Motor. No, it's not having anything. And it's an electrical, isn't it? You don't need the APU running. Oh no, that's not what I want. Let's <laughs> see what I disconnected. <laughs> Let's stop pressing buttons. Uh, autopilot's in. Right, I'm not. I'm not pushing anything. <laughs> Flight start. Where's that? Ah. Ooh. Ah. Look at this, guys. Come on. Right to send still good. 2,000 feet per minute. Fuel's in. There's no TGT. Do you just want to have random failures? It's not igniting. Probability of real. No, so th this is not showing failed. That's not lighting up. I've got fuel in. Is this a windmill stop? Maybe I need to go a bit faster to get the uh, engine spinning. But I've got M1. Not having it. Oh, ignition. Yeah, engine ignition one and two is on. I've got fuel. I've got ignition. Air. It's spinning. So it's just not lighting. 20%. It's no EGT. This is a. Yeah. Hung start. It's not. I no increase. I had an increase in M1. So something's increasing the speed of the fan blade and N2. So, so you know, it, it, it is spinning the motor up. Yeah. I, th I think, guys, it's, it's shot. Oh, maybe I already had M1 and N2. Is N2 decreasing? No, I mean, that is still a good engine. You know, it's still spinning. Fuel pump? Oh, gee. Ah, okay. Let's just do that again. I mean, you don't need the fuel pump in the NG. I think mean, there's an amount of suction feeding going on. M1's increasing, N2 fuel pumps. Yeah, I don't know. 
we'll carry on. We'll carry on with three. Hold on. Hold your horses. Where are we rooting direct to? Uh, oh my god, something completely bad has happened. Thank goodness for Navigraph. <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> what is wrong with this FMC? Right, um, everything always goes wrong. Right, 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 right. Cancel this. Right, off. Right, we're, we're three engines. Where on earth are we going? AP1, no, it doesn't make any difference. What have you done, FMS? You were you were rooting beautifully. It's now rooting direct to Luvob. No, you're not. Oh, I know why. It's gone off nav, hasn't it? It's a it's a roll hold. Oh no! <laughs> right, fix, fix, fix. Direct to Pirov. <laughs> you know when I lost electrical power, I think that might have done something. Right, twenty. Right, what's the MSA in this sector? Stop descending. Right, nav. Okay, so this is where you got to use a bit of common sense, all right? We've lost a bit of situation where we're dealing with the engine failure. So you'd have your charts up, you see your east here. What's the... Oh, look at that. It's not like the Alps are the highest point in the whole of the... whole of Europe is there. Right, 13,800. Right, we're already below that, so let's level off uh, first. I'm just sort of self-positioning here, and I've gotten direct... <laughs> There, I think. I think when I killed the electrics, lost the autopilot, it lost all the modes. So we got back into back into some safe modes. So let's route direct to Luvob now. Uh, number seventeen. Or oh, I should jump the gun there. I hope it still remembers that. Right, that's good. Luvob is good. So Luvob. Uh, let me just. Uh, find Luvob. So Luvob is 9-0, max 2-10 knots. We're just east and we have how many miles to run? 11 miles. Okay, so let's go down to 9-0. Uh, alt arm. Right, just make sure in IS hold. Just lose a bit of thrust. There we go. So we can go down to 9-0 within 10 miles. Oh, thank God we're visual today. This could have easily been really bad. <laughs> Alright, so we've got a three engine plane that navigated on its own because of an error I did. Uh, right, let's, we're safe now. Right, chart star. Uh, what was it? Salev 1 Papa. Okay. Okay, all good. Max 2 10 knots. Okay. So let's just go to IS hold. Keep it. Uh, let's just go to pitch hold now. So I need to bring the speed back to 2 10 knots. Speed brake and pitch up. Two ten knots. Just got to remember, I've only got the three engines. It's a good job. It's a steep approach, isn't it? <laughs> it's two ten knots, and we got to at up a low flight level nine zero, a little bit high. Right back to IS hold now. Right, well, crikey, seatbelts on. Yes, cabin crew, uh, sorry about this issue we're having as well, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> brew, press brew again. No, I'm not doing that. Caffeinate, aviate, navigate, communicate. Alright, approaching one to go. Fine. Actually, I'm quite pleased with that. Look at that. Nine zero below max 10, 2 10 knots. Just about made the restriction. So we're going to maintain this height until <laughs> we can step down further. Just going to go nine zero for a short while. There's going to be a little bit of a symmetry because engine number three is dead. What? I want to know if the devs have snuck that in. Because the engine, there's no failure on in just flight. Everything's all hunky dory. Oh, we can see the little bit of yaw. Swing slowly to the right when I thrust that. I've only got three hair dryers today, well, technically four. But it's gone to level off very early. Right, so remember, we're sort of flying uh, past Chambry. Next is going to be to Kenzo. So Chambry's just behind us. Down there, isn't it? On the lake. Beautiful scenery! Uh, quite pleased with that. Don't so to get it wrong. Uh, Jim, don't you check your H? Yeah, we're on a flight level here, buddy. So we've got to maintain flight level 9 to 0. Uh, flight level 9 to 0. The transition altitude here is significantly lower. Are you in the US, sir? 6,500 feet is the transition altitude. 
So 210 knots, flight level 90 is fine. We are a little bit high, but it's gone sort of levelled off. It was descending nicely, it's now sort of just... Is it because I've set 210 knots? Or is it... Oh, it's in IS still. I just wanted to descend to flight level 90. Perfect. So next is going to be the right turn to Govna. We can now start descending to altitude 6,500. So 6,500 feet set. IS hold. Reduce a bit of thrust. Now we can set the Q&H. Okay, 1018. Passing 9,300 for 6,500 feet. Descent, descent, descent. Good. Alrighty, 6,500. Next is Pyrrhus at 6,500. Descend! Is it IS held? Come on. Why is it not pitching down? It's in IS pitch. Why is it not pitching down? There it goes. Crikey. I've told it to maintain 210 knots. It's gone back to 190 before it starts, started to descend. Whee! There we go. Next is Pirov. Let's go into the ILS. After about 6,500, we can go down to 5,000 feet. X! Uh, Cat says it was a dev. I would totally backdoor your aircraft to fail. Things brilliant. It is actually much quieter. <laughs> that engine is not spinning. Well, we tried to restart it. I have no clue why that's failed. No clue. Anyway, we would have completed the appropriate checklists. We would have made the appropriate call to ATC. Cabin crew if required. As I said, this aircraft... True story. Uh, true fact, sorry. This aircraft can take off with three engines. They can actually dispatch and take off with three engines. Um, it's in the MEL. So, you know, an engine failure in, in this is not a, really, I don't think, a big deal. Right, one to go until six and a half. We can, from six and a half now, step down to... Oh, no, 6,500 mandatory at 403. So we're going to maintain six and a half still. Please press brew again. I'm not brewing any more hot drinks. <laughs> Anyway, glide path slide looks like it is going to be nice and steep. And max 185 knots now, so let's go back to pitch hold. I'm just watching this like a hawk. So pitch hold, let's reduce the thrust to idle. Bring the speed back now to 185 knots. Uh, I'll just select... Ah, uh, now, now landing flat, we're not going to go full flaps now with the engine failed. We're going to go flat 30. 121. I'm just going to bug 185 again though. Uh, yeah, I don't want to be going max landing flat. Oh, Sims crashed. Oh, no, there we are. We're good. Massive freeze. Uh, Jamlin, thank you. Uh, oh, yeah, flight recorder. Yeah, we can start that. You, Jamlin, found the engine failure checklist. Oh, I've got. To, I can't find the recorder in time. Uh, crikey! Why do much going on? Uh, desktop. Right, leveling off at six and a half. I hope. Why is it turning right? Where's the flight recorder? <laughs> <laughs> it's on, it's on, it's on. Right, speed's a bit fast, come on. I'm idle, why is it not slowing down? I'm oh, speed break. Come on. Right, we're a bit high here. Right, next is going to be the turn on to the localizer. Good, off you go. Quickly switch to heading. So I want heading. Oh, where are you heading? And I want nav, and I want arm lock, vorlock. Localizer armed. And we're going down to 5,000 feet now. Oh, thank you, massive speed brake. I love you. <laughs> uh, on. Right, good. Runway heading, uh, 175. And 5,000 feet we can step down to. Perfect. Speed's a bit high again, that's okay. 
So pitch, hold, let's just set. Ooh, don't climb, don't climb. It's really struggling to slow down, which I didn't think I'd ever say in the 146. It's not asking me to extend flaps, but I'm going to take a natural flops. Glide slope's alive now as well. Glide slope armed. Okay, I've logged off that sim. So it does look like uh, the glide path is the correct steep, uh, correct steep approach. I'm going to drop the gear as well before we start descending, just to help with the drag. And we'll go to flat 24. Get ready for glide slope capture. I do not want to go around like this. Uh, Mr. Approach attitude, 6,500 feet. Established on the ILS. Whoa, whoa, whoa. descend, descend, descend. Fresh, 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 fresh. Give me a little speed here. So, flat 30, please. 121. There we are. So, just one more natural flop. Well, I'm still very far out. Dear me, read zero here at the threshold, I think. Yeah. Okay, let's keep it at flap 24 now. We'll select flap 30 when we get a bit closer. So, there we go. Required rate of descent at 130 knots is going to be a thousand. We need to do a thousand feet per minute to stay on this glide slope here. And it looks like the pappies are good as well. Yeah, well done. For a default airport, they've got the correct glide path angle and pappies. Now, I'm not using the speed brake on this approach. Don't need to. I haven't got enough thrust. Alright. Well, I, I'm really curious as to why the engine failed. Linked to my coffee coffee dispenser. <laughs> right. Start doing landing checklist. So, PT, I've already got all this on for the engine failure. We use a bit of logic. There's no master caution lights on. Uh, turn on the landing lights. Okay. Just the landing flap to come, seven miles. Nicely stabilised. It's holding the glide path really nicely on speed. It'll go around and be messy here, but 2.4%. Uh, we should we should be able to manage no problem. It's 4.46 degree glide path here. All right, I'm going to select landing flap now, but not full 33. Add a bit of thrust for the drag. I don't know whether to use a little bit more engine thrust on engine number four to sort of counteract the yaw. So I've got a bit of a staggered thrust lever here now. Just to avoid any asymmetry. That's one for four engine pilots. Alright, speed's good. Remember, the minimums are 2,019 feet. 2,500. It's all, all nice and in trim. Three engine approach. APU on, or yeah, maybe I would have started that in this situation. <laughs> That's the APU. Speed's getting a little low. There we are, back on speed. Okay. Speed's good. Right. Engine 3 now says your speed brake. Yeah, that is true, Simon. Right, should we give it a go? Uh, right. Uh. Autopilot disconnected. Ah, where's it going? Is there any input on your the rudder and the autopilot? I don't know. This is my first ever three-engine approach in a four-engine aircraft. So target rate percent, remember, is at a thousand feet per minute, Chambry. Because it's a four point, is it four point four six degrees? The pappies are slightly shallower, but I'll just follow the pappies now. Two reds, two whites. Three whites don't get high. So these are sort of approaches where you'd brief. Yeah, I might have a rate of descent slightly in excess of a thousand feet per minute just to stay on profile here. My buff's going back in now. I've just dialed in about a thousand eleven hundred. Don't get too much higher than that. Glide slope's coming in now. Checked. Fast. A little bit fast. I didn't really change my thrust when I started descending quicker. A little bit high. Sink rate. Okay. That's a bit early. Sink rate's usually only a few feet above the ground. About 15. Oh, thank you. A 15 knots too fast. Okay. Still within limits. Just. 500. Check. Speed's coming back. Keep descending. 
Yeah. Oh. Okay. I think I'm not going to shut that up if, because if the rate is so much steeper. Right, a little bit faster. Right. right be, I'd rather be carrying the speed here. Stop it! Two rides, two rides. Come on. Ride slow. Wait. Where's my speed brake? Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Oh, a bit of, a bit firm. Um, right, we're down. Speed brakes up. Three hundred feet per minute. Ah, oh, the nose really wants to come up. I think I'm gonna start braking. Pressure seat. Hundred knots. There's no reverses. There we go. We're Six down. Knots. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, Chambry with uh, three engines. <laughs> wow, that was interesting. Um, still don't know why the engine failed, but it did. But we survived. We survived. Uh, tripped off all the power and uh, we lost uh, LNAV for a short while. And thankfully I looked up and realised that we we're in uh, <laughs> hold track or hold heading. Oh, crikey. There we are, three engine approach. Excellent. Right, we'll uh, backtrack here and uh, vacate next right. Well, we've got the replay as well. That wasn't too bad for an engine failure, steep approach, about 300 feet per minute landing. We'll take Sierra and then we'll just park in front of the main terminal. Brilliant. Oh dear, oh dear. It was alright, Edo. It was alright. I've done, I've done worse. Oh, I can't remember where the lights are here. Oh, they've started playing the music. I wonder if I brew another coffee, if I press brew again, will the engine will fail. No, it hasn't. Someone's tricking me. Alright, flaps are up, my spoilers are in, APU's already running. Let's get GSX up and running as well. No parking suitable in Chambry. There's no GSX profile, is there? Alright, okay. Too small, too small, too small. Well, the gate for a 146. Ah, oh, I won't bother, because we're going to do a replay anyway. Thanks for joining us a member, Sam Cobra Gaming. Welcome aboard. Glad you enjoyed the content. You can find it to our members only Discord. Hope you enjoy using the custom voted chat. Thank you very much. Lights are dim up here. How do I turn up the brightness? There it is. Ah, perfect. <laughs> this music. <laughs> we'll take the next, uh, or right at uh, November 1 here in front of the main apron. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a bit of a la long landing run. Yes, I. I Sort of used to reverse, slowing me down quite a lot at higher speed, but uh, yeah. Now you can see we lost the engine at top of climb. We only, look, only burnt an extra 100 kilos on each engine after the engine had failed. And you've got to remember, guys, I do not fly this plane. I, I, I'm hardwired for the NG and the max. <laughs> so when it starts doing things, I try and fix them doing things I do in the. Uh, in the uh, NG, but uh, didn't work today. Uh, right. Uh, again, yeah, this is just a generic air, but we'll take this this stand. Look at the scenery, though. Look at the sun setting on the uh, plateau there. Lovely. Perfect. <laughs> cool. There we go. Right then. Oh, tuck's on his way. Perfect. Oh, stuck in a bit of road trim, which I didn't need to. Cool. Right. Parking brake is set, and uh, AP's already running, but we'll shut the uh, three remaining good engines. There we are, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to to Shombury. Right. Lights off. Fasten seatbelt sign can come off. Anti-collision lights. Well, I can go and turn on actually. Turn on the entry lights. There we go. And the uh, APU's already on the bus. Engine air can come off. Uh, fuel pump. We'll leave that one for the APU. And where's the beacon light? It's up here. Oh, it's this music. <laughs> All right. Yes. I know an engine failed. Do I get extra points from New Sky because the engine failed? Is it going to go? Well done, flight engineer. Sim. The engine failed. You can actually have 20 points out of 10. I love how I only have... Oh no, there are four lights. I was wondering if there are three lights because the engine failed. Right, let's turn these lights off actually. So turn off... Landing lights. There we go. Right, let's see how we did on uh, New Sky then. Uh, perfect. Let's turn that on. Uh, oh, my strobes are still on. Oh, God, I'm so... 
I need, I need, I need an NG. <laughs> There we go. Right, let's see how we did here. Uh, close. I should have declared an emergency, shouldn't I? Right, what am I going to get here? <clears throat> Six? Oh! <laughs> uh, oh, no! Ah! That, yeah, okay. I think that might have actually happened. <laughs> no! Oh, no! <laughs> we did rotate a little bit quickly. In my defence, it snapped up. How can I tail strike a 146? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh 10 points three allowed 10. I was only points three over. But yeah, I. Look, Yoke Cab, if you missed it, I was rotating. I did that. Nothing happened. So I did that. And the aeroplane went woof. I was like, oh, released all the back pressure. Too late. Too late. Oh dear, oh dear. Uh, right, I lost us $150,000. Um, great touchdown. Um, so yeah, it was just a tail strike. Otherwise, it's perfect. Oh, blast! <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Oh, I, need, I need to stop this now. I need to stop this. <laughs> uh, save fuel with the engine out. Like that, true quarter page. Uh, should have saved much fuel, but I did. Um, yeah, I feel so much better now. Like getting two stri tail strikes in this. Yeah. I don't know, UNS was doing some funky things, wasn't it? But uh, overall, uh, yeah, super add-on. Great fun. I'd highly recommend it if you want to uh, to fly the 146. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, uh, yeah, very curious to why the engine failed. Um, it was as soon as I pressed that brew button. Maybe there's some weird link to... Uh, or the devs put it in for a bit of, a, bit of banter. But uh, No, we got it down. We got it down. Yes, the rear bulkhead is missing, but we're, we're here alive. There was no pressurisation issues. <laughs> <laughs> so, bonus points for New Sky, uh, said Robin, it's brilliant. <laughs> right, anyway, uh, I've had enough of the 146. No, I'm joking, great plane, but after two days streaming it in three sectors, I think uh, I think I need to go back into something a little bit more familiar. Right, uh, let's uh, load up the panel states, uh, just deselect GSX here so that doesn't mess around with anything. Uh, no, no crashing, at least, uh, with the sim. Uh, so aircraft panel states. I'm just going to go ready for takeoff. Ready for takeoff. I wonder if that's going to give me four engines running. Oh no! Uh, even the panel states not doing a lot of things. Let me just press that again. Ready for takeoff selected. Why am I pressing ready for takeoff when it moves the fuel to off? Oh, I, I don't know. I think it's I think it's not liking the second sector, is it? Right, I'm just going to try the replay. It might be with with no engines running. Uh, uh, more familiar, like an Airbus. Unbelievable. Save you all from the weight of the metal left on the takeoff runway. Steve M, bye-bye. <laughs> ruthless. You're not ruthless. Right, I just don't know what's going to happen here. Let's, let's see when I start the replay. Uh, replay. Okay. Okay, it looks like it might have worked. Speed spoilers out. Drop the gear quickly, replay. Yeah, look, see, no tail strike. No damage. Just roll this back 15 minutes to when we actually landed. Let's have a look then. So, yeah, it looked okay. Touchdown was a bit floating, a bit firm. Played a bit higher than usual. What if the spoiler come, the speed brake come out in the replay? Yeah, it did. Perfect. Yeah, a little bit of a float, but yeah, touchdown was okay. <laughs> I love those sounds. Yeah, the nose. The nose has a habit of really wanting to lift off after uh, on on the uh, rollout. I to sort of pitch nose down a bit. Nose came up again on that one. And I, I was getting a bit close to the end, I said, like, oh, I better start using the wheel brakes. <laughs> right, let's have a look at one more replay. Pretty safe views that we have here. Oh, that's a really good one, yeah, that's a good one, isn't it? I can't move the camera in that one, though. Awesome design gear, isn't it? Very cool. Look at that view. 
Some random, random pre save views. Awesome. Buster or bust. Thanks for that, Jam. Rory, I just joined before the engine failure. Hope I didn't jinx you. No, Rory, it wasn't you. It wasn't you. Not at all. Probably something I did. <laughs> Thanks for copying in here, guy. Uh, buddy, though. Hope, you, hope you're doing well. Right then, I can't. I can't really see any more you face. That was a disaster. No, no, it was alright. It was alright. Right then, there we go. Uh, Thanks this afternoon, really enjoyed that. Taking the 146 out for a spin. Nice to see some familiar faces, members and moderators here as well. Some regular subscribers too. Um, yeah, the 146 is available now with the V2 update. It was released yesterday morning, and I think it's on sale for the rest of the day. So if you want to pick it up before it goes back to its regular price, today's the day to do it at £40. I think it was just under £40. Uh, but yeah, thanks to everyone that donated, to all the members for your continued support, to all the regular viewers and subscribers for popping in. Really, uh, Nice uh, Saturday afternoon, and uh, the edge of failure added a bit of fun and spice to the stream. Uh, but uh, yeah, enjoyed it a lot. Uh, cool, enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys, and I'll see you on the next live stream very soon. Ciao!